did that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the I Am Very Passionate podcast. I'm Kamala Harris. Oh, and oh, shit. We're changing our names? We're changing our names. Okay, and I'm John Ossoff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he should have went with Joe Biden, but it's fine. I, I'll never be Joe Biden. I'll never be Kamala like, Harris. I get that, but like, I can at least, like, I'm happy he won. Oh, my God, me too. But like, I would much rather have been somebody else. Yes. So but like, that's not the point. Totally. No, totally, totally, totally. It's just like, I'm not going to be like, okay, he's here. Everything's fine. Like, I still want to hold him accountable for what he said I, he's going to do. I don't think there's, we're going to have any problems holding him accountable. I hope so. I don't think that. Because he's very moderate and he's very like hemming and hawing about like student loan forgiveness and everything. And I was like, you said $10,000, motherfucker. Make <laughs> it happen. You know what? I want him to do more than that, though. Hmm. Change Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. Oh, he promised that. Did he promise that? He promised that. And oh, that's work. why all of the Native Americans on, voted from? Yeah. <laughs> work. And so I like, I'm about to tweet him and be like, hey, man, first hundred days. I happen. need this done. I'm so tired of Columbus Day. He literally Same. raped my people. Yeah. I need I need it gone. Okay? We gotta let that shit go. <laughs> we really do. It's not... He didn't do anything. So, at this point of us recording... If you're is, living under a rock... It is the Sunday after Election Day. And we just found out yesterday on Saturday that Biden is the projected winner. Yeah. Um, so, hopefully that means he will be president mm-hmm. on January 20th. Mm-hmm. Or sooner, who knows? Doubt it, but it never happened. No, it um, has to be on the twenty. I just want him to like. What if he died? Well, I mean, because it would be Pence. But if he died, then it's gonna be Kamala. No, I'm talking about Trump. Oh, if Trump dies. I, huh. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I, we could um, run the White House just the way that it is. He hasn't done anything anyway. That's very true. At least people would stop losing their jobs. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> have you seen that meme where like Trump's getting the ultimate coronavirus experience because he got it and then lost his job, or and then now is now unemployed? I've seen it, but not the coronavirus experience. It, it's been the 2020 experience. The 2020. That's it. That's it. Because he lost a job, got coronavirus, got canceled. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Got COVID. He's unemployed. And now he's about to get evicted during a pandemic. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, I, for one, am very, very happy. If not for the only reason is, uh, did you watch him address the nation last night? I didn't. I did. And I'm so glad that I watched because Kamala came first and it was a very women centric speech. She, of course, congratulated Joe Biden and thanked her family. But a lot of it was around her mom being an immigrant and never imagining this moment for her daughter, but that her mom believed in the democratic system and what America could do for people like immigrants and that she represents every woman and will fight for everyone, no matter who they voted for. And that she said, I'm the first female VP and I won't be the last. Word. I was in the kitchen going, Kamala, Kamala, um, Cause I said it and I'll say it before. I'd rather vote for a corrupt black woman, daughter of an immigrant than a corrupt white man. Yeah, definitely. I just, a lot of this election was a chess move. And I know even Democrats can't be happy because most of the younger, more liberal ones, we wanted Warren or Bernie. I -hmm. very much loved Bernie. I did like Warren too. Uh, So this was a chess move. Yeah. This is about getting control of the Senate and bringing back someone who at least is preaching equality. Yeah. And not standing up there saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Get ready to arm yourselves. Yeah. Like, or coronavirus isn't real, or I'm going to fire Dr. Fauci. Like, Trump is up there doing Put his everything. head on a fucking spike. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Trump literally stands for everything that I'm against. And for yeah. me, this is not a Democratic versus Republican election. This was a human rights election. Absolutely. Oh, and I'm a couple a couple ounces lighter, guys. I had my tubicles removed. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She can't have children anymore. I'm, by oh, choice. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for a house, a new house. I'm uh-huh. ready for more dogs when we get to the new house. I'll adopt dogs all day. Mm-hmm. I just don't want any more babies. Oh, not even adopting kids. Um. I go back and forth with that. If I ad- adopted a kid, though, it would have to be like my kid's age at whatever age I decided to adopt. Mm-hmm. I don't want a baby. I wouldn't want a baby either. Well, I don't want a baby because I'm not a baby person, but also babies get adopted so quickly. White babies. Black babies, too. They get adopted more than older children oh, that really need a home. Fair. I'd foster. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like I'd get too emotionally attached and want to adopt the first one that I really cared about. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, the foster system is hard, but at least for a little while you can 
show love to show kid. love and make them feel whole and welcome again. Mm-hmm. I'm not against fostering. I would adopt though. I'm, I'm not, not against boy. it. I just don't know if I could handle it emotionally. Yeah, no, that's what I meant when I said against it. Like for me personally in our family, we're not against it. Mm-hmm. I would adopt more boys. Why Maddie's too much? Oh my god, Maddie <laughs> so much. <laughs> so dramatic. Madeline is yesterday, what did she tell me? She woke up and um she said, Mommy, wow, my, my throat is just so like sore and she sleeps so hard with her mouth open and the fan on that she gets and I was like, Okay, baby, we'll drink some water. You know, when you drink water it doesn't help. She's like, Yeah, I think you should just start coming in here and bringing me a glass of water every morning when I wake up. Oh bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I am not your maid. What did you say? I said, Go get your own damn water. What did she laugh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she the good thing is is madeline knows that she's ridiculous and okay. she laughs it off but she still embraces it okay good good yeah. this morning i made danny cry why he was on the last level of um what's the game I, my brain doesn't work the anesthesia wilds? fucked me up yeah uh-huh. and um i interrupted him to ask him a question and, and he, he was on the last one and he died and he came out crying he was like mom you interrupted me and I stopped because you told me I had to come when you called, but now I have to start all over. And he was just sobbing and I felt so bad. Why didn't he press start? I don't know. I, 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 I messed up his flow is what oh. Daniel said. Daniel was all over that too. He was like, yeah, you messed up his flow. And I was like, thanks for the support, <laughs> honey. I made our child cry. Well, the lucky thing about that boss battle is it auto saves right before it starts. Mm-hmm. So if you die, you start right there instead of having to go through the whole fucking thing. I really again. hope that he beats it. He was so upset this morning. Oh, it'll be okay. It it's a really one. easy boss battle. But anyway, we actually need to get to our topics because we weren't supposed to do Sorry. this. We haven't really caught up. We haven't seen each other in like two, in two weeks. weeks. I had surgery last week. Chris got married. Uh huh. So we didn't record last week. And Halloween was a big holiday for us. That went really well, by the way. Good. Yeah. Is that going to be a ray of light or? Yeah, I could bring it up as a ray of light. Cool. Yeah, and let's cool. see why not. So we did want to talk a little bit more in depth about the election really quick because we did kind of talk, touch on it this morning or at the beginning of the show. But, um. A whole 13 minutes ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shh. It's been a minute. It's been a long road. Sorry. I don't know if it'll be 13 minutes. I might cut some of this out. No, leave it. I like our rambles. <sighs> well, I, I, I do. I, I like our rambles too, but sometimes it's hard to follow. Okay. Like in listening back, I was like, what the fuck were we doing? <laughs> Like, there was one time, you gave me a mug. You gave me the mug. We didn't even mention that you gave me a fucking mug. We were just like, so yeah, I made you, you said, I listened I, to it. You said, I made you this. I was like, oh my God, I love it. Um, and then we just talked about the quote and we didn't say what it was at all. And so we talked for 20 minutes about this mug. And I was like, they don't know what the fuck we're talking about. So I had to cut it. Okay. <laughs> so You like, can cut it. I trust well, you. Well, I don't know if I'll cut it. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Okay. We'll see Back to the election. It. Okay. So... It was a very stressful election. It was gone on longer than any other election in modern times. Mm -mm. Oh, the the George Bush one. Mm -hmm. That's right. That was a month. That was was a month and a half, I think. Oh, fuck. I go crazy. Well, because the margin was so close that they had all states that had like a 1% whatever had to recount. And it took a long time. Wow. Because they had to manually count ballots, mail-in, absentee. That's terrible. Yeah. I, um... I'm glad I, I was young when that happened. I, I was sure that was going to happen this time. But Pennsylvania put such a large gap in electoral votes that... Well, also, um, Georgia, like, in ballots... Say it. Georgia went blue. A Georgia little, went blue! So far. They still haven't called it, no, but, but it's it, going to happen. It's uh, Yeah, it's going to happen. And I think we have to acknowledge that that was all Stacey Abrams. Absolutely. We no. have Stacey, to acknowledge that. We were queen. talking at work because, like, my row at work doesn't give a fuck. And we're just talking about the election all week because that's all we can focus on. We couldn't do our work. I think most people felt that way. Um, and so, like, I, I said, like, you know, if Stacey Abrams, or no, like, if Georgia goes blue, even if it doesn't, honestly, like... Stacey Abrams is going to be one of the most important black women in his in modern in history, history because she literally she proved, stars. like proved that Ooh. voter suppression is a reality, and she worked her ass off to fix it because she's like you know you fucked me over from my gubernatorial We're election. We're not doing that again. You're not doing it. So it's like. It, I was just thinking the ramifications of our our governor relate race two years ago affected this election. In Mario and I voted for Stacey Abrams. Of course we did. Yeah. Um. But like. Fuck Kemp. 
It was so upsetting when she lost because I was she should devastated. have won because they fucked over and suppressed people in communities of color yeah. and unregistered a bunch of people of color. Yep. It was predominantly people of color who got... My mom got unregistered. Luckily, she happened to yeah. get her driver's license and was able to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was such a huge deal when she lost. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to be a bitter bitch about this because yes. she's like, no, I'm not risk, um, conceding until we get a recount or whatever. And then mm-hmm. she's like, okay, fine. But this is the last you heard of me. And she went and started an organization and um, registered oh, over 800,000 people in Georgia to vote. In low-income, predominantly black neighborhoods. Yep. That was her focus. And guess who showed up and showed out for Georgia elections? Mm-hmm. All of those counties around Atlanta, um, Augusta, and let's not forget... Our county is always blue. Our county is always blue, but Macon went blue. And Macon, Macon went never blue, goes blue. never goes blue. So, like, she did the damn thing. She did it. Uh, Savannah, too. Wasn't yeah, well, Savannah's Savannah? always blue. Savannah's, okay, I didn't know. Um, I voted in Savannah um, for Obama's second election because mm-hmm. I was still in college. Um, but it was it was a stressful time. But no, uh, Savannah, Columbus, Atlanta always go blue. But also Athens went blue. But Athens, I think, is typically blue because it's a college town. Um, I'd have to look it up, but I feel like it's not. There was more blue counties on the Georgia, and I pay attention heavily to Georgia counties. Uh-huh. There was more blue counties this year than there. Oh yes, than there's there like a stripe been. down the middle, and yeah. usually it's just spots. Yeah, um, it was a blue stripe pretty much down the middle. Like Misting did the damn thing, and. Honestly, I was so kind of a little bummed that Georgia was not the one to call it first because if he would have gotten Georgia, he would have won before Pennsylvania announced. Yeah, because we were we were I think we were just focusing on Nevada and Georgia. Nevada, Georgia. No, they were they were well, yes, because they were saying, "Oh no, Nevada, Pennsylvania is going to go red. red." Yeah, and then all these votes showed up, and it was like, "No, motherfucker, mm-hmm. blue, blue, blue." And he has like a, a large lead now. Like, yeah, I don't. <gasps> Have you seen the meme about Nevada? Uh, which one? There's literally a the million. One, but the one about McCain. Is it McCain from Nevada? Yes. he's No, no, he's from Arizona. He, okay, so then it was Arizona before Arizona flipped blue. Uh-huh. And it was like, oh, you know, listing all the reasons why people in Arizona wouldn't vote for Trump. And they're like, yes, but think more recent, but think more recent. And they were like, oh, he made fun of John McCain. Who was beloved by them. And where's John McCain from? <laughs> and I was like... The memes are TikTok right now. TikTok right no. TikTok. I'm living for it. You hear me? I am commenting on every fucking video I can find because I have cultivated my TikTok to be gardening, cooking, LGBTQ, black women, and all of those people are the making politics. political comments right Word. now. And it is a fucking messy queen right now. You would love my TikTok. <laughs> because it is just meme after meme after meme after meme after video after video dragging Trump. Nice. And I followed now this politics, and they've just been dragging him for two days straight, and it's amazing. I mean, he's throwing a tantrum. Right now, they're posting nothing but past concessional uh, speeches. Really? That's all they're doing. Like, the last 10 years of concession... I'm sorry, the last 50 years of concessional speeches. Wow. They've done it with everybody, and I'm just like, can I tag Trump in this? (laughs) This is how you do it if you need help. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, this is also how you do it, because... This is this is the whole purpose of America, mm-hmm. right? And so, like, if you're going to ignore but it, he's going to try to. He's going to try to. So then you you this, then again, this really is not a Republican Democrat American election. This is a toddler, yeah, who's mad that he lost it's the a man game. and his cult are upset that the <coughs> cult leader lost his power. I think Melania is going to dump his ass. That's the rumor, actually, that and she's, she's gonna, going to divorce him before he gets arrested. He gets arrested, so, so she, she can, can get, get money. her money because she she redid her prenup when he got elected. Oh, did she? That's why she wasn't living at the White House. <gasps> they said it was because of Barron, but it wasn't. Oh wow! She redid her prenup that first like sixty days he was in office, so she's supposed to get an additional like seventy thousand or something, some weird number like that. Oh, if she work. stayed for four get years. Get your money, girl. Absolutely. Fuck. Dump his ass. That's why, like, all... That's why I never... When people were dragging her about, like, her comments, like, what more do you want me to fucking do? I was like, she don't want to be there. Yeah. She doesn't want to be there. I she, still have no sympathy for the bitch. I have no sympathy, but also I'm not going to drag her. I'm she getting her coin. I guess, but, like, at no. the same time... Get your you're sell work. Like, you're selling out for, like, in a huge way for money. I wonder, though, if he said, you stay with me and you get nothing. I'm sorry, you, you don't stay with me and you get nothing. Or you stay with me and get something. Because he would be the kind of asshole to say something probably. like that. There's probably some fucking loophole in their first prenup. One of my favorite memes for involving her uh-huh. is um, 
It's video clips of her, him trying to hold her hand and her yanking her hand away. Yeah, she don't want to touch it. And him. superimposed over her head are all the states. So it's Pennsylvania, oh, Nevada, no. and Georgia. <laughs> Oh, no, we can't laugh. <laughs> and so it's her yanking her hand away from him and all the states yanking their hands away from him okay. when he tries to hold their hand. <laughs> my favorite my favorite meme right now, there's a thing on TikTok where they superimpose, like, lips and a mouth over different inanimate objects. Uh-huh. And my favorite thing is, like, Arizona and um, back when Georgia was the one who we thought was going to do it. Arizona and Pennsylvania going to be like, you call it. No, motherfucker, you call it. No, motherfucker, you call it. Where's Georgia at? What's Georgia doing? And then, like, this real, like, ratchet-ass music comes on, and Georgia, like, slams through the door in fur and everything. It's like, what up, bitches? We're going to call it. I was <laughs> like, oh, didn't. my God. Uh, I wish they would have called it. Uh, but I think it's smart that they didn't. Why? Because the margin was 1%, and in Georgia, if you have less than a 1% margin, then you have to recount the votes. So it would have just prolonged the election. What is it at right now? It's still like one it's maybe he has like a 10,000 vote lead but that's down. less than what it's like 0.1 percent yeah so I think that I think Georgia also I have another theory I think Georgia Arizona and Pennsylvania were literally waiting to see who had the largest lead that wouldn't force an automatic recount and I think uh, Pennsylvania did that according to their voting laws oh you know Pennsylvania oh well they've already called Pennsylvania for him now yeah um what's the lead What's yeah, the percentage? It's a 0.6% lead. But I don't think that Pennsylvania has, has that it. Law. I think Georgia does, and I'm not sure about Arizona. Georgia has that law if it's within 1%. Yeah. yeah. Because Georgia, it's 0.2. Yeah. Um, so I think everyone was trying not to do that. That's wild, though. He flipped five states so far, potentially six with Georgia. Um, I'm going to call Georgia. Oh, I hope so. I hope it's him. I hope it's him. Also, I also think that... <laughs> I'm such a conspiracy theorist right now. I also think that the news outlets, like, kind of played the game up until the election, like, marked what they said, made comments, but they weren't, like, disparaging comments because they're in news. But, like, as soon as he started, like, tweeting and acting ridiculous about the election. Jake Trapper went It was, in. oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like CNN, I feel like MSNBC, I feel like all of them were like, fuck this motherfucker. No, we're going to let... Who was it that said, and it's my pleasure to interrupt the president at this time. He has Jay not Trapper, wanted to. Oh, my God. I was living. I was like, this is my dream. Everybody needs to shut him down. There was, there was a time where there was like a MAGA person behind a news reporter. Yes. And said, are you real news or fake news? And he just goes, fuck, fuck off. Yeah. On I, live television. It was great. And then he smiled and stared down the camera. That fourth wall was broken. We were there with him. It was great. No, and then Jake, no. Um, Anderson Cooper got a little backlash for this, but... Um, I, I stand Anderson Cooper, though. Yeah. Uh, I cool. do. He's no, right. I like him. Um, but he he called him... Also, guys, I'm really nervous. I'm holding a pillow to my stomach because I feel like Mario is going to make me laugh, and it hurts oh, so oh, no, much. No, so. Oh, she's sore still. Yeah, apparently. Daniel got in their teeth. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. Soon. Um, no, six weeks. Oh, fuck. I have to wait six weeks. He could fuck me up for six, like... It could hurt me, so I have to... No, oh. not for six weeks. Wow, I'm sorry. No, it's hard. One week down. Almost. <sighs> I kind of want to think about it. Anyway, uh, he... Anderson Cooper was talking about Trump throwing a tantrum at like a press conference. And he's like, it's like watching a morbidly obese turtle roll around on their back. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> like, he just said that on television. Let about- me tell you, I can watch Trump now. Oh, because you need to... Like, I couldn't before. Because he doesn't have power anymore? Or? I I, um, I think because I felt as though news channels would say things but not really say things. I feel like they had to hold back. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I think now they all got together and they're like... You know how they did after Diana's, Diana died with their sons? I was too young. Okay, so after Diana died with their sons and obviously was the fault of paparazzi, all the major news media outlets in England decided that they were going to pull back out of respect and not bother Harry and William until they reached a certain age. Oh, right, right, right. So right. I feel like the the... The news cycles were like, you know, we're not sure, so we're, I don't know what's going to happen. We don't want to be wrong. Let's just play the game. And then, like, election week came, and they were like, no, we're going to drop F-bombs. <laughs> we're going to call him a fat, wiggling turtle. We're going to make fun of him. Yeah. Because it's been great. I, oh and I, so I feel like with, like, news media is doing this now, I'm like, I can watch Trump now. Because <laughs> for a long time, I felt like no one else saw what I saw. Uh-huh. And I know that people did. I know that you did. But it was like if people weren't standing up and saying something, like, I can't acknowledge this man exists. What if he becomes president again? Yeah. That was hard for me. 
Did you see the Four Seasons fiasco? No. <laughs> what happened? Oh. <gasps> Tell me, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Trump wanted to do a press conference at the Four Seasons. Is that what he said? Hotel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw well, that. One of his people accidentally booked the wrong venue, and they <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it was on purpose. But, but he accidentally booked in front of the Four Seasons like construction thing. So it's like a construction warehouse. Oh, in the tweet said beautiful. Gardens. Yes, yes, that's why. Oh my god! And so, and so they were like, "Fuck it, we're going with it." So Trump oh did a my press god. conference. That was not accidental. That was in front of the Four Seasons construction. That was not thing. accidental. That legal team that he hires is so tired of him because they're not getting paid, and they're like, "Fuck it up, just yeah. whatever you can to fuck it up, just fuck go ahead and up. fuck it up." Yeah. Have you seen him on Twitter and Instagram? No. Yeah. Him, Tr- Trump, Trump. Yeah. I've, I've been avoiding it, but I have seen some of the tweets about. Don't him. don't avoid it because. Twitter is flagging every mm. single one, and so is Instagram. I've seen that. The one I've I've seen is I've won this and by a lot or something. Seventy one thousand um, stolen votes, largest marginal gap in history. I won this election, and Twitter was like, "Nope, sorry." And like, so you can't if you go to his page, like you can't read the tweet because it says been removed. no, not been removed. Oh. It just says this is um, false information about the voting. The election hasn't been called. And if you click on it, then you can read it. But there's a whole paragraph from Twitter above it. I think it's not true. Yeah, basically. Um, and then also, I like the the meme that says Instagram too is also doing that. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. good for Instagram. Well, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Instagram's owned by Facebook. Mm-hmm. And Facebook is doing that. Yeah. Um, but Twitter's also, and now there's rumors saying that they're going to delete his Twitter as soon as he's not president. Oh, God, I hope so. Ban be his ass. Bl- ban they him. banned Steve Bannon. I don't know why they wouldn't ban him. Oh, yeah. Well, no, but did you, did you see why they banned Steve, no, Steve Bannon? No, I didn't. Steve Bannon said, I just thought it was overall. So Steve Bannon is a former um, campaign aide um, of Trump's. And he actually was in power, and then he did something stupid and had to be removed. Removed. From office or from appointment, and um, he said, "If I were Trump, I would put Fauci's head on a pike." Yeah, yeah, I did see that, um, but I didn't know that they banned him because of they that. They banned him permanently for that. My God, like what the fuck is this? This is America. This is not fucking. And then also look at the message that Biden and Kamala are saying over and over again: "It's time to heal. It's time to unite. I'm still going to fight for you if you didn't fight for me." You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, that's the people that I want in charge. Yeah. I don't want you in charge, Mr. Head on a Stick. Uh, it's terrible. Go away. But all in all, like, Trump lost, hopefully. Like, oh, he lost. It's done. They call PA. They called it, but that is a, they have to certify it. Nothing is official until the vote is certified. Oh, and I know. And that's not going to be for, like, 15 to 20 days. I don't think that anyone's going to... But the thing is, he's going to be challenging shit in court, left and but right. They, but they've shut him down, Most left and right. Most haven't shut down. I think the Supreme Court shut him down on one thing. Yeah. Um, but the closest thing that they have is the, the Pennsylvania situation. So that's why I'm desperate for Georgia and Nevada still to go blue. Because yeah, even because, if the Pennsylvania yeah. situation co- comes to fruition, <coughs> because Pennsylvania allowed up to nine days or something after the election for you to get your ballot in for it to still count. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's saying that's unconstitutional or not okay. Um, so... But it wouldn't be if it went red. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't see you contesting it then, so shut the fuck up. And so, um... Because we all felt that way about Hillary. She won the popular vote. Yeah, by a lot. By a lot, and still lost at the Electoral College. So... I really hope Biden and Harris... Fuck you. That's the one thing I want to say. If you live in Georgia, <clears throat> um, we have two runoffs happening in January, and mm-hmm. it is desperately important that you vote mm-hmm. for John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. Yes. Because if both of them win, we get control of the Senate, the House, and the presidency and can pass some major shit. And I am voting. Oh, yes. Absolutely. No, I'm go- I, like, I'm thinking about phone banking for for Ossoff and Warnock because like we need to get as many Democratic voters to vote for them as humanly possible because it is so important for our future for the, us to have control of the Senate as well. Because if we have control of the Senate, we can literally pass anything because the only thing we would not have control of is the Supreme Court. And if they pad the Supreme Court, then we would. Did you see that he tried to pass a law that we could only have nine justices? No. He try- He's trying to pass that law now. Republicans are trying to get it done. Ooh. So if you, you should, I, I have to check and see, I believe it's on all ballots, but they are saying that you should call your local senator or your state senator and let them know that you don't agree with that decision because the Supreme Court really does hold a lot of effect on what happens in our country. Yeah. And I've been, oh, can I tell you one thing that did make me cry? Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can find it off the air so we don't waste time. 
but um, someone posted a um, a video about Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh-huh. just like walking up the Supreme Court steps and being like, this is why I fought. This is why I did what I did. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't remember the music. That happens to me when I get emotional, but like the music and the scenes of her. The music is so powerful. And I just started crying. I was like, I can't, oh, like God. how sad is it that she's gone and doesn't get to see my hormones are everywhere, guys. <laughs> it's fine. So fucking crazy. No, it's it's a travesty that her seat was replaced by such trash. I it's yes, but it's also a travesty that she worked her whole life and for women's rights and doesn't get to see the first female black. What is it? Um, Eastern Asian, Asian American, Asian American. Well, they East Asian American. I think it's East Asian American because her mom is an immigrant. I want to make sure I say it correctly. But like it doesn't get it doesn't get to see it, you know. Yeah. I'm not someone who believes that she's watching from heaven. Yeah, same. I do believe that her spirit is uh, floating around, just like at the end of the Good Place. Though, is okay. there a religion based on the Good Place? I would do that religion. Um, should I start that religion? If Kanye can start a cult, I can start a cult. I don't know. I don't know. But um, you're really gonna like the ending of his dark materials. Really? Because it's similar. Okay. That's why I thought, like, when we first watched the Good Place, that's a cough. Um, when we first watched The Good Place, I was like, oh, I feel like they lifted something from His Dark Materials. I remember you saying that. Because it's very similar. Um, because... Oh, uh, HBO bought slots on, um, uh, TikTok for His Dark Materials. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of their... Uh, I hope, I hope more people watch it. I love it. I can't wait. It comes out this week, right? Does it? The 12th. The 12th. It comes out this week. This is week. such a big week for me. Oh my God. I'm getting my new iPhone. Yeah. I'm getting <laughs> His Dark Materials is coming out and Thursday, then something else is happening. Thursday. Um, Thursday. So, so, yeah, that's, that's all we really had to say for the election right now. As things go on, I'm sure we'll say more. Um, and the next 73 days are going to be wild uh, because there's 73 days until inauguration. And a lot of shit's going to try to be passed, and Trump's going to let his ass hang out the whole time. What did you see? Uh, I just, I don't know. I feel like I should say um, thank you. I feel like I should say thank you to people who never voted before. Yes. A lot of black people voted for the first time in their lives. This was record-breaking numbers for Native Americans. Um I'm so and I'm so grateful that Black Lives Matter had such a big impact mm-hmm. earlier this year because we got to see not only the black community but every disenfranchised community stand up for Black Lives Matter and I think that was a catalyst for this election. Yeah. And so if you voted, honestly if you voted Republican or Democrat, thank you because this is the whole purpose of America. I wish you would have voted Democrat, but it doesn't matter because obviously the president-elect and vice president-elect are still going to fight for you. And they've said it multiple times. Yeah. And I think a huge thank you. This has to be said. I was talking to Mari about this earlier this week. And we have a podcast idea for a friend of ours. Mm-hmm. Could he, hopefully she would want to come on. But like a huge thank you to black women. Yeah, black Who are women obviously still carrying this country and yeah. still lifting up the white people that support them and are keeping it classy and keeping it cute because they turned out in record fucking numbers. 91% of black women voted. And I think 80% of that number was for Biden. Yeah. That's phenomenal. It's I, no one out. There's no other demographic that can say that except I think for native, um, native Americans, native Americans was like 98% Biden. <laughs> I they believe were like, it. The, the, the number that showed up and it was a huge number for them mm-hmm. and they're not even on our fucking census. Like yeah. they're, they, you can't they're claim not represented. To, yeah, so just grateful that I wish it had been a landslide, but I'm grateful that the people well, stood up and said something. It is a landslide based off of popular vote. I wanted to see 300. He's going to hit 300. No, really? Yes, okay. he has 290 right now, okay. and Georgia still has to go blue, and it'll put him at 303. <clears throat> okay, then I'm or fine. 306. I'm going to shut up. I'm good. <laughs> I just thank you. Thank you for voting. Thank you for being, you know, a disenfranchised person and still trying to work the system. And yeah. I, I said it on Facebook, and I'll say it again. Do not ever tell me that your vote doesn't fucking because it does you flipped a state guys we haven't done that since jimmy carter yeah and that's because he was from georgia biden not from georgia that's not true that's true we went blue for 92 for clinton we did go blue for clinton because he was a southerner oh yeah we loved some clinton i still love some clinton He's okay. I like a president that's getting head in the Oval Office. <laughs> that is, no, it's just some of his policies really fucked over the black community. I, um, that, yeah, that's true. And then he did a lot for global 
like piece too. Yeah. And so I liked him towards. No, the I, end. I don't hate him. I liked him a lot when I was younger, but as I learned more about him and more about the, the ramifications that nobody really foresaw at the time. Yeah, because like now it's really time, political was, to fight for black people. At the time, I don't think most of us were aware. Yeah, well, except like, the black community. Definitely, and definitely. That's unfortunate. Like, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. And so seeing the ramifications of everything that he did, okay, maybe he wasn't the best, but at the time it seemed like he was doing a lot of great stuff. He was doing more progressive stuff than I think we expected a democratic moderate southerner to do. Yeah. And also he gave us Hillary Clinton. So. Yeah. Love her. Um, but I still think their, their uh, marriage paper says I'll marry you if you run for president so that I can run too. Cause I'm sure <laughs> that at the time no one ever thought, I never thought I'd see a female president. Yeah. I, I knew I would see a we black president soon. before a female president. We might see a, oh, a black here's, female president. Soon. Here's, here's hoping that Biden steps down in two years and Kamala gets a 10 year seat. I'm, does that count? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's the only way you can have a term longer than eight. They can die or step down. Wow. And it has to be at the halfway mark of their presidency. So Kamala could theoretically be 10 years. That'd be crazy. And then maybe AOC will run. I have such a fucking crush on AOC. Oh, I love it's her. It's not going away. I want her to be president one day. I, I, yeah. And I would accept her being a Kamala AOC ticket. I don't know that we would see that for her first re-election, but maybe her second. Maybe. I think Kamala would have to get a white man. I think so, too. It's all chess. It is. I think Kamala would have to get a white, a, like, a moderate white man. Because Kamala is pr- li- more she's liberal than She's very liberal, yeah. Um, but she's not liberal enough for me. But I still like her. I, yeah, enough. but I think you and I are cool with, like, a democratic socialist society. Yes. So, yeah. I want democratic socialism. Me, too. <laughs> um, but we'll get there one day, hopefully. In our, if not for my lifetime, for my kids' lifetime. Definitely. And that's all I care about. Um, but moving on. We can talk about this quickly. Okay, good. Because I don't have much to say. <laughs> Sorry. You go first then. I want to okay. hear. I still haven't heard. So, like, you know, speaking of chess and everything, it's all about positions. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mario's <laughs> transitions <laughs> make me horny. They're so good. Give it to me. The position of these songs on this album. So, we wanted to do a quick little review of Ariana Grande's album. And, like, it's just not for me. Like, yeah. I, I'm i not huge into R&B. Like, I liked 90s R&B. Uh, yeah. Um, but, like, this is just not for me. And it's it not. It doesn't feel like, it feels like Ariana doing R&B. It doesn't feel like R&B. Yeah. I think that's the difference. Um, and not I, that it's a bad thing. I liked a handful of songs. Like, Positions has grown on me. I like Love Language. Um, and I like, oh, God, what's the other one? I like the one with Doja Cat. Uh-huh. That's and okay. I, I like the first one. The the first one. Shut up. I don't like shut up. Oh, I love shut up. I like n- nasty. Uh, and that's okay. uh I think it is obvious. Motivation. I like motivation. Motive. Motive. And oh baby, what's your motive? Yeah. And I like I like 3435. It's okay. Yeah. It's about 6090. So I will say that I listened to it once. And Mario and I have a mutual friend, Tim, Tim Yella, I like to call him. <laughs> you call him Tim Instagram. Um, and he loved it. He's a huge Ariana. I'm a newer Ariana fan, but Tim loved it. He's been an Ariana fan since, like, the go. Yeah. Since jump. And I had to explain to him that I am not someone who believes in fate. I'm not someone who believes in, like, everlasting love. So this is not, like, for me. This mm-hmm. was a very... Everyone said it was going to be a more sexy album, and I think it is more sexy than her previous it's albums. It's sex-oriented. Yeah. Yes, but it's also about love. Like, there's a lot of love in there, too. You uh-huh. know? Oh, what's the one about having a good day and manifesting? I like that one okay. Uh-huh. Let me get my phone. I can't stretch. Um, <coughs> Madeline loves it. <laughs> I, won't, I won't allow her to listen to 3435 because Side to Side was the most that I could tolerate. What about Nasty? I didn't have that one either. <laughs> Get the nasty. other thing that I want to point out is that <laughs> Sweetener and Thank You Next were two albums that I did really like, but each song was so... Lead single. Lead single, very different. Yeah. Like, there was a distinction between songs. Every song had a different hook, different beat, different style. This album kind of feels like I'm listening to kind the of the same song. song over and over again. Yes. It reminded me of Taylor Swift's album that came out. Like, I literally skimmed through that uh-huh. to see what it was like. 
every song sounded the same. And maybe oh. that was intentional. Like, they want each to, like, lead into another. But you can do that without, like, listen to listen to Confessions on a dance floor. They all sound completely different, but they play fade into each other without um, issue. What is it? Strip did the same thing. <sighs> so, I, you know, good job, Ariana. Yeah. It's, it's still passable. good. People love it. You're debuting number one positions. You're going to get streams from my house because Madeline, every time we get in the car, is like, can we listen to positions and not the song, like the album? Uh-huh. She wants that. I'm probably not going to go to this concert, though. Good. Yeah. Cause- Jamie Lovato, where are you at? <laughs> Janelle, where are you at? Guys, we need you. <laughs> All right. I need it. Uh Okay. And I need to talk about his dark materials because I've been dying to have somebody to talk to about this. Okay, I'm ready. For fucking ever. So we will be right back after this brief break <laughs> and come back with our discussion of his dark materials. Uh, dark materials season two, guys, oh. starts on uh, the 12th, which is this Thursday. Work. Well, November 12th for this will be released Friday. Yeah, so so you can watch season, it by the time. We're reviewing season one. Yeah. So we'll be right back. But welcome back. Um, now we are going to start talking about season one of His Dark Materials, which is based off the book series by Philip Pullman, which is one of my all-time favorite book series that I've never had anybody to discuss with in depth. <laughs> so I'm super excited about this. And I do want to forewarn that mm-hmm. I have read the book so many times that like things with the show and the book are going to blend together for me. So if something did not happen in the book, I need you to, or the movie or the show, I need you to tell me because I have a hard time differentiating. Okay. Because I've, I know the story so well, mm-hmm. in and out, that, like, it's just all one blur. I actually think I'm going to watch it a third time. Oh, you already watched it? Oh, wow. I watched I told you I did it on my... Mm-hmm. I went back and forth between Sex and the City and this, because Sex and the City is, like, when I don't feel good, that's what I watch. Mm-hmm. So when I was feeling like shit, I would watch it. And when I felt good, I would watch His Dark Materials. Work. So I think I'm going to watch it a third time. Uh-huh. I don't know. I also think that I'm going to buy the book so I can read and audio listen at the same time. Do it. Because the, so I will say this, I haven't read the book, but Mario has told me that it pretty much follows the series. It is does one follow of the, the best. Like I, I, at the end I wrote like notable differences mm-hmm. and I only have four bullet points that I can so, think of off the top of my head. Yeah. And that makes me really excited because I do love the Harry Potter movies, but they do not follow the books to like the degree that I would want them to. Oh no, this is so close. Yeah. Um, But I I think I am going to read it and I am going to, um, uh, audio listen at the same time. The audio book, if you haven't listened, is one of the best audio books I've ever listened to. It has a full cast and music production and the author is the narrator and he has an amazing voice. I'm saving it till I get the book. In fact, I think I'm going to go. My Kindle's over there. I'm going to buy it. Make it work. Yeah. I'm excited. I want to listen. I haven't listened to a book that I've really loved this year other than the one by Trump's niece. Oh, Mary Trump. Yeah. That one was really good. I like that one a lot. You're going to lead this. Yeah, totally. Okay. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, well, I have like summaries of each episode. Like, of the basic talking points of what happened. Just talk about the polar bear fight. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go through so them. And then we can discuss through oh, yeah. about the episode as it goes. So the first episode is Lyra's Jordan. And this is where we're introduced to Lyra Pan, Roger, Mrs. Coulter, and Lord Asriel. Um, and it starts off with Lyra sneaking into the Jordan College meeting room and seeing the, the bottle of Sakai getting poisoned, which mm-hmm. is the wine, and she warns Asriel that it's poisoned because they're trying to kill him. Mm-hmm. And so she saves his life, and he has her go back into her hiding place and spy, and this is where she's introduced to the concept of dust. Um, she gets to see Chitagatse, which is the city in the sky. Say that again. Chitagatse. It's so good. Um, and um, and she kind of learns, starts to learn about the multiverse. I should also, I have to point this out because this mm-hmm. is a big selling point for me. James McAvoy is oh, in it. Oh, yes. He's so and gorgeous. Lin, Lin-Manuel is in it. Ugh. Stop it. Girl, look I at my notes. Him. I have, I have. I don't, look I don't Look at care. episode four notes. I love him. <laughs> look at episode four notes. Some people might watch it just because they're in it. Don't, don't shut it down. Why did you write unfortunately play? The, and then, then, then did you see, did you see the eye roll emoji? <laughs> yes, I did. So. I like Lin-Manuel. I am all about blind casting, but Lee Scoresby, mm-hmm. his character is supposed to be an old white texas southern man Mm -hmm. and it's kind of important to his character let me ask a question yes 
How involved was the author in creating the show? Heavily involved. So then he signed off on Linda. No, he totally he, he signed off on all of this. So then we're good. But I just don't like it. I understand, but as you a didn't long-term write it. fan, no, absolutely. <laughs> but as a fan, I don't like it. But I also do not like Lin Manuel Miranda. I like Lin Manuel. I can't Miranda. stand him. I Why? feel like he is so overhyped. I don't think so. Like I don't. I can't get into Hamilton. Oh, I love um, Hamilton. And then like everybody like acts like he shits gold, and he it's does. just like. Eh. I'm not impressed. I, I love him. I, I'm a huge fan. So when I saw him in that episode, I was like, yes! Oh, that hurt a little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> so continuing on, um, in this whole scene where she's learning all of the stuff, they also bring out, as quote-unquote proof, Stamis, Stanislaus Grumman's head. Stanislaus Grumman's head. Yeah, you're going to have and, to. And um, Stanislaus Grumman is a very important character because that is not his head. That is somebody else's head. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's... As the show goes on, you find out more about who he is mm-hmm. and the importance of him. Um, but we'll save that for later episodes as we t- when we talk about Will. Okay. Uh, but then Lyra learns about the gobblers and her friends play gobblers and snatch or kids or whatever. Um, and then she realizes gobblers are um, like a group of people that are snatchers. snatching up kids, and they can't seem to like figure out why or when. Or but where. also, they don't know if it's real or not. Yeah, it's just like a big rumor. What is it called? It's like a uh, like an old wives' tale to scare children. Kind well, of. it's not that old. It's more of like an urban legend in the That's sense the that like it's the boogeyman and the gobblers are going to get you yeah. sort of thing. But this is a very new thing. Like she's just hearing about this. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows really the truth about it or what it comes from, um, and. Her so they they kind of introduce different characters. Um, you see the Egyptians with Billy Costa, and like Tony has his like his, I like the Egyptians. I like the Egyptians a lot, although I expected them to be more of color. Yeah, I can um, see that. Also, when I was typing up my my thing, mm-hmm. if you see gay titans. That is Egyptians because it kept auto correcting okay. to gay titans. Okay. I don't know why. I like gay titans better. Let's switch it. <laughs> I like gay titans. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> And so, like, you see kind of, they they kind of explain the concept of demons through the Egyptians mm-hmm. by Tony having his his demon settle on a form. So, in this world, demons represent um, your soul and the kind of person you are. Mm-hmm. And so, typically, people with certain demons will have certain professions because it's just, it's, you're a good match for that. And so, a lot of servants is, are dogs. Yeah, demons are animals. Oh, they yeah. are portrayed as animals in this world. Um, but as a child, because you don't know yourself as a person yet... I love this. Um, your demon can change shapes into any animal yeah. that, that's within you. Do I get to see what Lyra's demon becomes? Yes, you do. And Am it is I going to really be happy? I don't know. Okay. It's, um, I didn't even know what kind of animal it was. I had to look it up. Yeah. Um, because it's a ve- I've never heard of this animal I'm before excited. This. Okay. Um, so I will say... But it's a very common animal in Europe. Okay. So it's not like an unheard of animal. It's just in America, we don't have them. I'm going to look it up. Well, I'm going to I can wait. tell you what it is. No, no, no. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Unless they change it, of course. Okay. So Mario has been raving about the books in the movie. And I think you were kind of nervous that I wasn't going to like it. Yes. But I will say that I think I was messaging you as I was watching it. Uh-huh. And like I was hooked. Yeah. Because the first episode, there's so, there's three, essentially three storylines. Mm-hmm. And right so, now. like, you're going to have to... Well, they kind of all come together during season one. Well, yeah, no, but there's more than three storylines. Right, so you but get three... The three main ones. Yeah, so you get three main ones. And they all kind of, like, come together. And also, the show is so beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for good scenery and great shots. Like, if I see a beautiful shot, I'm like, oh, this is a well-thought-out movie. Like, I just, Except ugh. for Cats, because there was only one good shot in yeah. Cats. That was it. The, the tap dancing guy. Mm-hmm. But I really like the storyline. I was very, very invested into knowing why James McAvoy's character... What's his name? Lord Asriel. Lord Asriel. I forget names, guys. Lord Azrael was trying to be killed. Like, that was really... What well, was it trying to be killed? Was was targeted. was targeted. It, it reminded me much a lot of the... What's the book in Harry Potter where they're trying to kill Dumbledore? Seven? Six. 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 So I was like, ooh, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. And then I loved the idea of, like, sci- it is very science versus religion. And I'm... See, I, I think, will always be a sucker for that. 
I found out they're introducing Mary Malone in next season. Who's Mary Malone? She's probably going to be your favorite character. She is a nun who quit being a nun to become a scientist. I'm going... She love her. I'm going to sit on the face of my computer while I watch it. <laughs> I love her so much. She's yeah. She's the third main character of the series. Really? Yes. There's I'm three excited. main characters, Will, Lyra, and Mary Malone. This is such a good um, book. Or a good series. Just, I wish I could tell you who they are. I don't want to know. But anyway. I don't anyway, want to know. Because anyway, I'm, anyway. very, I'm very, very invested in the story mm-hmm. now. So there is was, a science versus religion aspect. You a can't tell me anything. Aspect. I'm really ignoring you now. Well, no, but also there is kind of like a divination aspect too mm-hmm. because the lithiometer. Um, yeah. And so there's a prophecy with Lyra as well. And yes. they talk about it in the first episode about her great betrayal. Uh huh. My gosh. this There's so many complexities. I was telling Mario that I, I love Harry Potter. I will always love Harry Potter, but I actually think I preferred the storyline so far. Mm-hmm. Although I'm not into Mrs. Coulter. And I know, yeah. I know what I know what you said, but like Mrs. Coulter, she's bitch. a very, very dynamic character. I can hate her already. Um, and she has a good redemption arc, I think. Okay, so just wait. I love a redemption arc, and if you like the redemption arc, then I'm okay because sometimes you don't care about redemption. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm into it. But there's so there's a divination aspect because they do, like this isn't a spoiler; it's just something else that's explored. Uh-huh. Um, because you you know how have. Did they explain how the alethiometer works? Uh, no, I asked you that. Oh, she and kind I told of, you not to tell you. She kind of figured it out, but it did, they didn't explain it. Like what? what's talking to her, how it's... No, no, no. Okay, then they never mind. Just, we're not saying... They, they show that Lyra figures out how to read it. Yes. But not... It's an intuition what? thing, so think like tarot. Okay. Um, it's all intuition. Yeah, I kind of got that sense, but I think I asked you, I was like, did I miss how the alethiometer works? And you were like... I don't know. What did they say? And then I told you and you're like, so no. And I said, well, then don't tell me. Cause yeah, I want, then I, I don't want to tell you either. Like normally I don't care for like, I, I'm okay with spoilers, but not for this. I don't think you find out specifically what's controlling that until you meet Mary. That's fine. I can um, wait. So we'll wait. Never mind. I'm not going to break, but divination is an aspect. But the alethiometer was a gift given to Lyra from that's supposed to help guide her on this like journey. Well, it, that's not why it was given to her. Why was it given to he her? He gave it to her to keep it from the church. Oh, that's but right. But also to bring it to Lord Asriel. That's right, 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 right. So and she's so, on a journey to find Lord Asriel. So, well, let's finish this, this summary of this episode. So he, um, she misses, or no, Roger and Billy Costa, who is from, Billy Costa from the Egyptians, mm-hmm. um, he is, cap- they're captured by the gobblers. Mm-hmm. And she kind of finds out they're missing, but then she's called to dinner where she meets Mrs. Coulter and she is just enamored by Mrs. Coulter because Mrs. Coulter is a very charming. She's super charming. But she's also like this very like woman in a man's field. Like I'm not going to like, I'm going to use my charms and everything to get what I want and I'm going to have power. I'm a little cold. Oh, she's, well, not at first to Lyra. She's actually very warm to Lyra. She's not cold to Lyra until they get to her house. Mm. I, I got coldness from her. She did... The actor who plays Mrs. Coulter She's is very incredible. Good. Because when I saw her interacting with Lyra, I instantly was like, this is false. Like, praise. And oh, yeah. And just trying to... It, it, she was very good but, at it. And I can say I'm kind of sullied by Lyra's perspective. Because from Lyra's perspective in the book, yeah. she's like, oh, she's so amazing. I love her. Like, yeah. this... Oh, she. I want to be like her when I grow up. Because, like, if you think about it... Lyra is this girl who loves adventure, who mm-hmm. doesn't like following the rules. And here's this woman who's a female explorer yep. with all this money and power who's been to the north and done all these things that Lyra wants to do. She's completely enamored by her. Yeah. And is is just so excited. I need to read the books and see if I have the same perspective. And so... Is it first person? Is it no, first person? It's not. But okay. you hear, like you find the, out what she thinks okay. and stuff. Okay. Um, and so she meets Mrs. Coulter and... Mrs. Coulter says, hey, like, I need an assistant, and I wanted to hire you to be my assistant and protege, and I'll teach you everything I know so you can become an explorer. Which, of course, Lyra's And Lyra's like, absolutely. Yeah, let's, when do, let's we do it. When do yeah, we go? exactly. Tonight? You need me to leave now? Um, and so, because originally she thought she was going to be sent to, a, in the books, she thought she was going to be sent to the school run by nuns. And it was like, the girls' schools, because in this world... Girls don't get the same education as boys That's because right. girls are subservient to Another boys. Another storyline that I love. Um, and. And so the master does not want this to happen, um, but you don't really find that out until later. Um, but essentially, the morning before Lyra leaves, she um, is called to the master study at like five in the morning. Goes there, he gives her the alethiometer and says, "You need to take this to Lord Asriel. Do not tell Mrs. Coulter that you have this. Mm-hmm. Um, do not tell anybody that you have this. Like this is your mission or whatever." And she's like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, I think and he she, states it like, "Don't tell anyone, including Mrs. Coulter. Mrs. Coulter." Yeah. yeah. 
And so she goes with Mrs. Coulter, and Mrs. Coulter says she'll help her find Roger and Billy. Right, who were kidnapped by the Gobblers. So, yes. Um, and so in this episode, like, it sets up the groundwork of everything. You also meet Asriel, um, and see kind of how cold he is to Lyra, because he's cool. introduced as her uncle. And he's very cold to her and very strict to her, but he also gives her money and calls her out on her bullshit because, like, she's a liar. Like, that's one of the things I love about Lyra, actually. I usually hate liars, but she is such a skilled liar. And that's why she gets her new nickname, her new last name at the end of the series, at the end of the book. I think that lying, you have to learn how to lie. I think Mm -hmm. it's important in life. No, I agree. Like, people who get mad at their kids for lying, I'm like, yeah, but they, they kind of need to know how to lie, and they're going yes. to lie, and that's normal. No, I understand the necessity of lying. I just hate being lied to, especially when it's something that's not necessary. Like, if you're sparing my feelings or something, that's one thing, but if, like, I I'm just asking you a very simple thing. Yeah, I, I can see that. It's just, it really bothers me. So, it's it's just, it's just surprising to me why, that I love Lyra so much. I think it's different when my friends give me a lie. Uh-huh. But, like, if it's a total stranger, I'm like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Because I want to know why my friends lied, and that might deter yeah. my feeling. No, definitely. Exactly. Because there's yeah. shades of gray. Yeah. But with strangers, it's black and white. Fuck you. Yeah. Um. So... So that sets up everything, really. You Episode get to one see. was really good, guys. Yeah, it was. It was very, very good. Uh, you get a real sense of this world. Um, it is very different. Like, I want to compare it to Harry Potter, because mm-hmm. that's probably the only other thing that I've read that's such a different world. But um, it's not quite Harry Potter. I can't... I can't, there's nothing to compare it to. Yeah, no, it's, it's it stands so alone. Yeah, it's very unique. It's um, very good, and I think that kids and adults would like this. I very, think so. very. It much. started off as a children's book, I believe. I think so too. And then, like as they were selling it more and like whatever, like you know, this is actually is more. Yeah. Especially as it got went on, like the first book was was very much like, oh, it's adventure, and then like by the third book, you're talking about very deep oh, biblical I love shit, stuff like that, and they're like, oh. This is an adult's book. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I can't wait to read. I'm so pumped. So episode two, uh, we have Lyra in London with Mrs. Coulter. And um, she's being taught new things, enjoying the wealth, going shopping, getting new clothes, like feeling it. Like she's like, oh, this is the life. I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also shows a scene of Egyptians trying to save the kids from the gobblers mm-hmm. and failing because they go there and I think the building's abandoned. They they move the kids. Yeah. So yeah, there's the nobody there. Move the kids. Yeah. Um, and then you're, we're introduced to Lord Boreal, who is a very important villain for, like, the first, I want to say first two books. He might be in the third as well. I don't recall um, when what happens to him happens. Mm-hmm. But he really, oh, in the second book, he really pisses me off. Like, oh, really? You'll see. You'll okay. see. Um, I'm so mad that this is a week-by-week drop. Yeah, I'm not. I'm fine with it. I know what's going to happen. I'm not. Just read the books and you'll be fine with it. I just can't wait to see it because I looked at the casting for season two and they've cast certain characters because they've cast Mary, they've cast Baroque and Balthamos, um, who I'm not going to tell you who they are, but they're big, well, one's a very big character. So you like the casting that they've done? I don't like the casting for Balthamos. um, Okay. Or Baroque, actually. um, Because how they're described is not how they're shown. Because, like, Balthamos is supposed to be, like, very slight and thin Mm -hmm. and baroque is this big burly man and it's kind of opposite okay back Um, to season one sorry and and they've cast other people so i'm I'm just really excited about the casting because like characters that i love are coming into fruition i wonder how they're gonna like introduce the other life forms or how they're gonna like i don't uh, know what you're talking about i'm so excited i'm so excited i'm sorry so I, I need to get up back on topic. Ruth um, Wilson is who plays um, uh, Mrs. Coulter. <gasps> Andrew Scott? Oh, I, Andrew yeah. Scott's in the first one. Yes. Oh, I flipped my shit yeah, when did. I saw Andrew Scott. he's Moriarty, right? Yes, but he's so fucking talented. It makes me sick. Mm-hmm. Like, he's really good. At, when when they talk about how they cast him as Moriarty, like his um, audition. But the other things I've seen him in as well. Like, he's very, very good. So I, this is a really good cast. I'll it say is. that, too. I will say, compared to the first movie... I'm like, not, they did a movie. movie. Nicole Kidman was Mrs. Coulter, Why? and she was terrible. Why are we still casting Nicole Kidman in anything? That's fair. Practical um, magic. The only Nolan casting Rush. that I like better in that than the new one is Ian McKellen was Yorick Bernison. And he was so good. Because um, I fucking love Yorick. Um, but anyway, 
Anyway, so it shows the Egyptians trying to capture or trying to rescue the kids, and it, the kids have been moved. We were introduced to Lord Boreal, who's a big secondary villain of this series, um, and he's talking to the Master Jordan College, and the Master is refusing to show him Stanislaus Grumman's head. Okay. Stanislaus Grumman's head. It's such a weird name. We're going to start calling him by something else different shortly. Okay. Um, so don't worry about it. I will say that even though I rewatched it, the portal thing mm-hmm. is is strange to me because. Isn't the whole purpose of this is finding portals to get to different worlds? Am I wrong about that? Isn't that what Lord Asriel is trying that's to what, do? That's what Asriel does. But right. there is a way to create a portal. Mm-hmm. But there is a specific tool that comes into place in the second series. Okay, so maybe I'm not supposed to fully understand it. You're not yet. Because we're talking about Lord Asriel looking for portals, well, he, XYZ, yeah. just now is now well, a factor. So, but then we've got this guy just, mm-hmm. like, hopping through portals left and right. Well, they kind of explain that. I missed it, though. Because of the Aurora Borealis, it makes the the barriers between the universes thinner. Mm-hmm. Um, no, yeah, I get that. But then why is... And so that's why you can see Chisagatse Chisagat in the sky. So then, but, okay. And so that causes portals, I guess. Right. And so, because, like... I got that. John but... Perry, who's Stanislaus Grumman, uh-huh. he finds one of those portals in the north, because he was also out in Sporting, and he comes to our world. Maybe I missed that. Oh, no, he's from our world, and he comes to that, That's Lyra's what world. I missed then. I assumed that he came from Lyra's world and was just hopping back and forth into our world, but it's the opposite. No, Boreal way. is... Boreal is from our world. About? Hold on. I'm talking about Stanislaus Grumman. No, but hold on. I'm talking about Boreal. Lord Boreal works for the Magisterium. But he's from our world. He's from our world. No, 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 no. He is from Lyra's world. Okay. But he keeps coming into our world. So there, there are two parallel universes that we're going through currently. Mm-hmm. There's Lyra's Oxford and her version of... of That world. world. That world. And then our world. Yeah. So like hers is more medieval kind of. Like they don't have... There's they, not a lot of technology in her world, and the technology they don't have cars in the same way. Yeah, um, and then they have, uh, I think, they have carriages more. Yeah, and they have airships, and they have ambaric energy I instead love, of electric energy. I love the airships. They're cool. I love the airships. I don't know why the but zeppelins. Like, I've always been kind of. What are those called in our world? The zeppelin. No, in our world, the There's, zeppelin. It's not called a zeppelin. Yes, it is. It is called a zeppelin. Mm-mm. Dirigible. A Zeppelin, a dirigible, that's what they're called. Like in real life. In real life, they're no, called they're dirigibles called and Zeppelins. Else. No, it starts with a B, I think. Maybe the one that crashed starts with a B. Maybe that name That wig one? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think so. What do you call them? It's a Zeppelin. A Zeppelin. Or a dirigible. Dirigible. I like that word, but I, only because it stay off the dirigible ones. Mm-hmm. I like it because of Kiki's delivery service. Okay. Dirigible airship, yeah. I've always wanted to go on one. I think it'd be so cool. I'd be afraid of dying. Um, <laughs> because of what happened with that big one. Yeah, I think it started with a B. Go ahead. But anyway, uh, where was I? Okay, no, so... Hindenburg. That's the Hindenburg. Name. Hindenburg, yeah. So, Boreal is going between our world and... Because he has found different portals. Because... So, I can't really explain why he's finding portals until you see the book. Or until you see season two. Yeah, I think that's what I'm confused But there is about. a reason there are random portals in, like, in Oxford and shit. Um, there is a reason. And so... And I think because they don't explain that, I'm like, what is this dude doing going back and forth? Like, not mm-hmm. everybody's dude. This isn't normal. Why exactly. is he doing it? That is, that is a mystery for them to explain in season two. So, I, that's the one thing that I... Um, I get stressed out about is that I feel like I'm, I miss things a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I'm constantly missing And this things. is why I think you should read the books first. Uh, um, because... I'm enjoying the show Oh, no, so the show's good. Much. The show's good. But, like, you understand, oh, that's why this is happening. I don't want to ruin it. I, well, it's not ruining anything. I mean, but you're like going to experience I, a story. I feel... I, yeah, I'm going to experience it. But for but some reason, like, I started it with the show, so uh-huh. now I want to... So many fantastical it. things go on in the second and third book... That I'm like I can't wait to see I'm it. I'm excited. It's gonna be amazing looking. I hope they better do. Season I hope three. they better do season. I, three. I'm really nervous about a certain species of a creature, but we'll see. Okay. Anyway, anyway, so he goes to our world. Mm-hmm. Boreal goes to our world and hires somebody to go. And we might actually have to speed this up because we are in episode two and we're already 25 minutes in. Okay. Um, so he hires somebody to go look for John Perry's um, family because John Perry is Stanislaus Grumman. 
And John Perry is from our world, and he accidentally slipped into Lyra's world when exploring in the north. Mm -hmm. And he needs to figure out how. And um, Lyra has a confrontation with Mrs. Coulter, and Mrs. Coulter shows, like... Her bitchy side. I didn't and like it. This is actually... Okay, so she definitely did not like it. It's not a good thing. Like, her demon punished Lyra's demon so as a form of punishment. So we should say that, though, is that what your demon feels, you feel. Because it's your soul. Because it's your soul. And... Um, if your demon dies, you <coughs> die. If you die, your demon dies. So in order... I guess Mario had explained to me that it's common for parents to, to punish the demon to punish the child. But when I saw it, I was like, this It looks like child abuse. Bitch. I'm going to kill her. Yeah. Yeah. So Lyra... So... Lyra refuses because Mrs. Coulter knows Lyra has the alethiometer mm -hmm. because the monkey was spying through her shit. Because no. Mrs. Coulter and her demon, so that's one thing with demons is demons can't go far away from you, but Mrs. Coulter's can. Yeah, and there are only certain people who can do this, and the ones who are most common to do it are witches. But Mrs. Coulter is not a witch. That's why I thought she was a witch. Mm -hmm. Like, when they explained that, I was like, oh, she's a witch. It makes sense. And then I was like, no, no she's, she's not, not a, a witch. witch. And I'm like, well, then I don't understand anything about this show. <sighs> so. But I kept watching. It's only episode two, guys. Exactly. Exactly. But also, there is a way to make this happen. And it's a very painful thing that you have to go through. But yeah, you'll see we'll that in there. book three. We'll get there. Um, anyway, yeah. anyway. So, Lyra wants to keep her purse on her. And she's like, you can't keep your purse on you. Like, you're in your fucking house. Mm -hmm. If you're at a party. Because they're about to have a party. Mm -hmm. um, then... People yeah. look, you, you look crazy with walking around with a purse on in your own house. Yeah. And so, like, they get to an altercation. Lyra loses. And in this altercation, Mrs. Coulter reveals to Lyra that Azriel is her father. Oh, which like does that. not happen in the book. In the book, Lyra does not find out Azriel is her father until Ma Costa, she's with the Egyptians, and Ma Costa tells her her story of how she came to be at Jordan College. Mm -hmm. um, so she, this is a new thing. I guess it's something for... To kind of like make Mrs. Coulter seem more villainous, or like, that's how spiteful. I got it. Yeah, it seemed real. And I wonder if they're going to change her story arc Maybe. to make it more television villainous. Really? I don't know. I'm going to have to start reading. <laughs> we'll I'm see. Have to start reading. Um, but anyway, Lyra. So after that happens, she leaves. Mrs. Coulter leaves, and Lyra goes through her stuff and finds a hidden drawer in her desk where she finds a list of all of the missing kids, and she realizes she's the head of Gobblers. Mm -hmm. And so what at this party, stand for? the General Oblation Board. That's it. And so I'm going to explain that in just a second, because she's, at that evening, to have their party, and she runs into a journalist who explains to Lyra what's going on and what the General Oblation Board is. And essentially, they take oblates, which back in the day was a thing where you would take your child because you had too many kids or whatever, or you wanted to get favor for the church, and you would donate to the church to do with as they please. So they'll become a monk, they'll become a nun, or they'll be a servant of some sort, um, a gardener to care for the grounds or whatever. Like, they're an oblate. And so that's how the magisterium, which is the church in this world, who has all of the power, um, is justifying this because they're being sacrificed by their parents to this to this cause. But in reality, or that's what they're saying, but in reality they're kidnapping these this kids. This is the kind of book that makes me want to write a book. Right? Exactly. This is one of the biggest inspirations for me with my dream it's book. Oh, so God. Because multiverses and the different realities and yeah. stuff was heavily inspired by this. Mm -hmm. um, but then, of course, just my dreaming in general. But anyway, um, they find... So she's talking to the journalist. Uh, Mrs. Coulter confronts the journalist, I think, or Boreal. One of them confronts her. The in the book, In the book, Mrs. Coulter does. I think in the show, Boreal does. Boreal does in the car. Because he ends up killing her yes, by car. squishing her She's a moth. butterfly. She had a butterfly. Oh, I thought it was um, a moth. Demon, and it kills her. Um, but Lyra and Pan escape, and then are, at the very end, captured by the gobblers. Um, so we are 30 minutes in, and we have only done two episodes. So I'm going to try and go a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, and summarize the whole story, and then we can go and talk about, like, the more in-depth things that we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Lyra's rescued by the Egyptians, Tony Costa, who's Billy Costa's older brother, and his friend Benjamin. Um, then Lyra's taken to the Egyptians, where she agrees to work with them to go to the north to help them save the children, because she has information and knows about Mrs. Coulter. She tells Billy and his friend about the list she found, and so they go to her apartment to break in and get that um boreal meets somebody that he hired and explains that stanislaus grumman is john perry who is will perry's father who went to the north exploring and they so they go to his family his wife and his son who are left alive to try and get information from them and they refuse to talk gay tight gay tight um was it there yeah <laughs> 
So Ma Costa tells Lyra the story of how she was brought to Jordan College and her conception. So Lord Asriel had an affair with Mrs. Coulter, who was married to Robert Coulter at the time. And Robert Coulter found out when Lyra was born that she, he looked nothing like her. Mm-hmm. And so he found out it was Asriel. As he went to Asriel's house and confronted him, and Asriel killed him while Ma Costa was working for there, for them and had Lyra in a closet crying. Mm-hmm. And so Asriel killed Robert Coulter, and this is what caused him to lose all of his money. But he got to keep his title because it was a big political thing, and they wanted to try and stifle him because he's doing things that the church doesn't agree with. Yeah. So they use it as an opportunity. Um, but not always the case, though. Asriel did not want Mrs. Coulter to have anything to do with Lyra because she betrayed him and took Robert Coulter's side. Mm -hmm. And so she had her smuggled away and taken to Jordan College where she has asylum. And Mrs. Coulter is not allowed to go there. Uh, But the only reason Mrs. Coulter is allowed to go there now is because Asriel is captured by Yoga Ragnarsson in Mm -hmm. Svalbard. And so she's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going, I'm getting my daughter. A whole lot of complexities. There's so many complexities. But this is when Lyra finds out Mrs. Coulter is also her mother. And then she meets... um, John Fa, who is the king of the Egyptians, and she works with them to convince the other Egyptians to go north and save the kids. And, like, they're trying to say, like, well, what if we only, what if we save the Landover kids versus just our kids? Or what if we don't save them? And it's like, how can you do that to a kid? Like, that's fucked up. Yeah. Like, it's, putting kids in cages, it's really Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> bring, it, bring it full circle, girl. I had to. Um, so, Tony and Benjamin go to Mrs. Coulter's house to get this list. Mm-hmm. And um, they're cornered. Tony's able to escape... Benjamin is, like, against, like, a an elevator shaft. And instead of being captured and tortured by the Magisterium, he kills himself and mm-hmm. jumps into the shaft. Um, Lyra figures out she can read the alethiometer because John Fogg kind of explains the concept of it. Yeah. And so she practices it and realizes she understands it because it's about intuition. And also, there is a whole thing. I'm very intrigued by the alethiometer. The, the cool thing about the alethiometer is you can study to become an alethiometrist. Like, mm-hmm. you can get the books and learn all the things. But I think it has something to do with children's open-mindedness that she doesn't need books to read it because it's just her intuition and her creativity. But as she gets older, she loses the ability. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's kind of a cool thing about, like, the magic of a child's mind. Oh, I love that. Um, Being able to understand things that parents or adults are too blinded by reality to perceive. I want to watch the show again with Madeline. Do it. She might like it. I think she would. Uh, And then... Something else oh, that we skipped, sorry. Um, Mrs. Coulter sends these two spy flies oh, I love that to go get Lyra or to track down where she was. I and they finally that. catch up to her. So the spy flies catch up to her and they are able to capture one, but the other gets away with Lyra's, I think, hair. Yeah. And t- goes to take it back to Mrs. Coulter to say they know where she is. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, cap- um, they put this spy fly in a tin and like, keep it for safekeeping. Um, to be able to use later. So Tyra, Lyra has that in her pocket. Um, from there, they get to Trollesund, which is where we meet Lee Scoresby, um, Hester, and York Bernison. Mm-hmm. Bernison. Um, and these are very important characters of the series, so... Pay attention. Pay attention. Um, but Lee is from Texas. <laughs> and he travels there to actually find York. And York is there because he was tricked out of his armor. Uh, and York armor, is a really big polar bear. He is a, an armored bear. He is... Uh, so, like, their their armor is kind of like their soul. Yeah. And it's, it's made from, like, sky iron, which is special, and, like, the amount of love and care they put into it kind of creates a soul for them because animals in this world don't have souls. Right. Um, and he has been... He got really drunk, or they got him really drunk and stole his armor from him, and so now they're saying... Despicable. You will work for us and do metal craft because well, polar bears are very good at metal craft. Mm-hmm. Um for a set amount of time and then we'll give you your armor back but they haven't given his armor I back yet I love him he's one of my favorite characters he's a good character and he's throughout the series too he's not just the first okay, book okay good good. so you'll good. see more of him not as much as I'd like but you do see more of okay, him okay good I really like him though so um the Egyptians also get there or go to Trollison to meet with the um the oh god what is his name Dr. Lensalius who is the liaison for the witches um, and also to get materials to go up. And so... I have a question. Do I get to see more of witches throughout? Yes, a lot okay. more. Okay, good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. they cast Ruta Scarti, which is a very, unfortunately, important witch. I hate her. Um, in season two. You, you'll you'll hate her, too, by the end of season two. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I do very much like the witches' storyline, though. This is a really intricate world. Yes. And the author... I haven't read the books, but from what I can tell, like, is 
there's so many details. Well, there's even more to come, girl, because there's angels and there's, um, <coughs> like, creatures. So, because there's multiple universes, Earth develops in different ways on different universes. So, like, instead of humans, there's, like, Galavespians, which are, like, these really small, like, six-inch people. Um, and then there's, like, the Mulefa, which are, like, these elephant people that use, like, seed pods to move around. Like, it's all weird shit. I'm so excited. But that's the ones that I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to look. Because I've never seen a good so picture excited. of them. So, like, there's... Because Earth develops differently in all these different universes, different things are the apex predator. And so you kind of interact with some of them as the series goes on. And so... Um, this is such a good book. Or so just the cre- It's so well thought out. Yeah. Um, and... I wonder how long it took him to, like think of the whole thing i have no clue I would you should ask him to know. i will i'll ask him but tomorrow. like i just love that like he's like i'm gonna write this super 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 detailed book to be critical of the catholic church why not <laughs> let's fill it with all the metaphors that we can fill it with so um farter Coram, who is just a very like high up character in the egyptian world um, he had a lover in Serafina Pecola, who is the main witch of the series. Mm-hmm. And so they go to contact her. They speak to Dr. Lansalius, and he has Lyra use the lithiometer to um, to go pick out the piece of sky, or what is it, pine, sky pine, that she so. uses to fly with. And so Lyra goes to do mm-hmm. it, and while that's happening, I don't know if this happens in the book or in the show. Well, but just say it. So, Fartacorum and Dr. Lansalius talk about who Lyra is, with what her destiny is. I think that happened in the show. Okay. Yeah. And so, they don't really say it outright, but she's supposed to... Uh, but Lyra's uh, destiny has... Is to end destiny. Right. But also, it is talked about a lot in the first season. Yeah, she is there's a very different important conver- character. And you have to pay attention because there's different conversations about different parts of her destiny. And there's a reason why the Magisterium is after her yeah. versus Mother... Or Mother what's her name? Um... M- Mrs. Coulter's after her. Bitch Coulter? Oh, Marisa. Ann Coulter? Oh, stop. Don't, 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 don't. She's, she's prettier terrible. than her. Oh, she's prettier, but she's terrible. But, uh... I don't know if I'm going to like her redemption arc. You may not. You may not. What but she, she does redeems, is she so does, terrible. But what she does to write it is so selfless. So, I like her. Okay. You don't have to. But I, I like her. I may not. I mean, I think separating kids from their demons from what you've explained to me is just like one of the worst most painful things you can do and i don't know mm-hmm. that there's a redemption you're literally cutting out their soul yeah i don't know that there's a redemption for um that. yeah no i agree i mean i'll have to experience it and then make a decision yeah. but right now i fucking hate her no i feel you i feel you um so from here they go he asks dr lansalius if like, Dr. Lansalius is like, do you have any questions for me? And he's like, yeah. What would you have... If you were me, what would you ask you? Mm-hmm. And he says, I would ask where I would get the service of a, of a armored bear. And so they go and oh, find yeah. York Bryson. That's a good scene, too. I, lo- I like Dr. Lansalius The way that they shoot this, though, is so good. It is very good. It's such a well-shot show. Like, it's... It's so beautiful. I was devastated when the f- movie that they made was so we, bad. We don't discuss the movie. No, I have to. I no. have to. Because I was so devastated. So to see a Just story that I love so much get the... Let me speak, girl. <laughs> To see a story that I love get an adaptation that is so good and so well crafted mm-hmm. and so beautiful is just so exciting and satisfying to me. It makes me so happy because compared to that, the Golden Compass, the Golden Compass it? movie oh, cut wow. out the last like three episodes of the series, which sets up the rest of the fucking story. So like she essentially reunites with. Uh, they've had the polar bear fight, and then she reunites with everybody to go up to the Lord Asriel. And then it ends. The movie ends. I watched The Golden Compass years ago. Years. A, a decade ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't even feel like I'm watching the same thing. It's the same story, but it's told it better. It doesn't it's feel more the same. Maybe well, because you, it is more detailed. Well, I mean, you have to think. This is eight episodes to tell a story in an hour and a half that they did. Yeah, had. it doesn't feel like the same. And also, the bear fight is better. Oh, definitely. The definitely. bear fight was weak in the movie. So anyway, um, Lyra... Goes to York Bernison, says, Yernison, says, hey, I can help you. Tells him where his armor is. He goes gets it and gets it. And then she agrees with the people who are trying to stop him that we will take him away from here and he will never come back if you allow us to leave alive. And they're like, okay, fine, yeah. whatever, get out of here. Um, and then... Good choice. They're heading up north to go to Balvanger, which is where the kids are. And... Oh. What? 
The blackmail. Oh, oh yeah. The blackmail. The blackmail. Mrs. Coulter blackmailing her way to stay in Oh, the- shit, yeah. Did I skip an episode? No. Oh, I scrolled down too far. Oh. Okay. So he goes to get his armor, and then they head up north. Mm-hmm. Um, then it comes to Mrs. Coulter speaking with the Magisterium, and they're about to demote her. And so she kind of blackmails her way to say, you know what, no, you're not going to do that. But on top of that, I will give you Lord Asriel's body. Because um, she has him. Because she has him captured. Because she's charmed Ghost for Rackneson, who is a polar bear, the king of the armored bears, who wants so desperately to be human mm-hmm. and wants a demon. And so in the book, he actually carries around a stuffed animal to pretend to be his demon. <gasps> so cute. I mean, he's um, a dick, but that's adorable. And in, in the book, because in here she offers him a baptism to agree but in the book she offers for um Selbard to become a college mm-hmm. so they can be a uh, studying and stuff like the humans do yeah um but anyway she travels to Yofer Rackneson who is the king of the bears on Svalbard and um has her like agree to work for her and then they're going to go to where Azriel is so the crew is traveling north um and the while they're traveling north Lyra's reading the lithiometer and it tells her, hey, you need to go to this village over here because yep. there's something you need to find so you get a better picture of what's going on. So her and, Yofer, or her and York go over and they find Billy Costa who has been, who has had his demon cut off. And so, like, something... That was terrible. It was terrible and then also the people in the village treated him terribly. Yeah. But also something people, I guess, have to realize is in this world, seeing a person without a demon is unheard of. Like, it's like seeing a zombie. Yeah. It's freaky. It scares them. They don't understand they're it. They're kind of zombie-like. Well, they are because they don't have a soul. Yeah. Um, and so so she takes Billy Costa back to the, the Egyptians. And, of course, Ma Costa has this really heartbreaking, like, scene about finding him. And then he dies. And they take his fish. How long can you live without your soul? Exactly. Some people live a long time, as we see in Bulvanger. Well, yeah. Um, but... But while all this is happening, Will we're introduced to Will as a character, who is the second main character of the show and my favorite character. I like him. I this love is the kid from Will. our world, right? Yes, yeah. he's from our world. He's good. He is John Perry's son, and he's taking care of his mother, who has like some sort of mental illness. I think it's just severe trauma from the loss of her husband. That's what and I think. It's it kind is of broken too. her psyche. Um, and so, like in the book, they explain it very well about how she has to do things a certain way, or else things are going to fall apart. And so sometimes they'll go shopping and like they feel like people are watching or she thinks people are watching them. So they have to do certain things and zig and zag. Mm-hmm. And then it turns out she didn't have her wallet the whole time. So they can't get the food and they have to go put it back and then leave. Like just weird shit like that. Like she just puts them through stuff. But because she's so distraught from what happened with John disappearing. Um, and Boreal finds out that John Perry was going to the universes. Um, and that's how he disappeared. And came to their world. And so he sends people to go to Will's house to figure out what's happening. So they were gone. They came back and their house was broken in. So Will takes his mom to, like, not even a close friend, just a lady. Like a neighbor. That he knows and says, will you please look after her? Because if he... And he's like, you cannot call, like, child services or anything because they'll take him away. And he's the only person who can take care of her because she would get committed to, like, an asylum or something. Yeah. And so... It's really sad. Yeah. It is really sad, actually. I Really quick, I love when they hire actors that take it seriously and are not... Like, you would think for a kid's... The like, kid actors are so good. The kid actors are good, but you would think for, like, a kid's story. And I say that loosely because, obviously, it becomes more of an mm-hmm. adult story. Sometimes, like, the movies can feel a little bit cheesy and a yeah. little bit wrong. But everybody took their role extremely seriously. Well, I think also you have to take into consideration this this series is not being produced for children. It's being produced for adults. The TVMA That's very true HBO too. series. Yeah. This is not like, oh, this is going to be on the... HBO coming through with Well, it's really shit, a BBC man. HBO series. Oh, but well, still, they're not... Better. The BBC shows nudity and shit. And cusses, so it's I fine. I love BBC. Um, anyway, so it also cuts to Coram and Seraphina being reunited. And I don't know if they explained this in the show, but they had a son together who died. And be, they were lovers. And they were, like... I don't think so. Witches age very slowly. And oh, so wait, Coram wait, wait, is a wait, very maybe. old man now. Maybe. And they had a son together, and he died. And that kind of broke their hearts, so they went their separate ways. But she said, if you ever need me, um, call, like... Get in touch. I think so. And I will come to you. Yeah, I think so. And um, so they're reunited and they just talk about Lyra's role in all of this and how she's supposed to betray somebody but not know about it. Yeah. Which is truly heartbreaking. Um, but it leads on to her role of who she's supposed to be within 
destiny. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so let's see Lyra. Okay. Once she, once they take Lyra takes Billy back, she's like walking on the edge of the little camp or whatever. And she's captured by the people. Mm -hmm. And so the next episode, she wakes up in Bullvanger and she says her name's Lizzie. And this is where she learns about, like, she talks to the kids, scopes out what the fuck's going on. She finds Roger, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I found you. I came to save you. Um, the Egyptians are a few days out. We got to get the kids ready to escape. Like, yeah. we're going to pull the fire alarm or whatever. Do what we got to do. Um, so she learns about intercision. Mario also told me that this is the most nerve-wracking part of the book for him. Yes. It is so scary. I know she survives. I know nothing bad happens to her. But it's like... It's just how they describe everything. It is so lifeless and, like... It's unsettling. It's white. Everything's white and clean and like unsettling. Yeah. And it's just not a comfortable place. And the kids are like kept in rooms and herded together and separated by gender. And it's just really weird to me. But no, my heart always races when I get to this part in the book because I hate it. But my I love it. heart raced with the polar bear. Oh, that was a good fight. Though. I love it. But like it. leading up to it, like her oh, having her to convince him and, and like, yeah. Like oh yeah, that. that's very nerve wracking I was too. like, oh shit. She's about like, to this die. is going to be the end of everything for me. So she learns about intercision and she's like, we have to stop this. What? Explain Intercision is. is where they put these two kids, or put a kid and their demon in separate cages, and then essentially guillotine them apart. And it breaks the bond, and it causes a huge release of energy. Um, and the reason that the General Ablation Board is doing this is because um, kids have the ability to change their demon's shapes because they're not affected by original sin yet. But once they hit puberty and reach that certain age... I'm trying not to spoil things. Um, dust comes down on them and corrupts them. So yeah. they're figuring if they can cut the kids before they grow up or get to that point, they'll never be corrupted by original sin and will remain innocent forever. So stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. But also it's even more dumb because when you find out how the afterlife works, it doesn't fucking matter. You get to see the afterlife. You get to see the afterlife, I'm girl. really excited about this. And they get to change it. Like, it's just, oh, I can't, oh, I can't, I'm I can't so really excited. see it. And this is why I love the good place. Like, I thought the good place stole something because they changed shit. Yeah. Um, but anyway, anyway. Maybe he was inspired by it. Who's he? The guy who wrote the good place. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's really good. I'm excited. And so, uh... It's really fucked up because you're waiting basically in this episode for any moment for Lyra to be separated from her demon or for them to figure out that she is Lyra and not Lizzie. Well, they, they put her in the cage. They put yeah. her in the cage and they're about to cut them and Mrs. Coulter happens to be there mm -hmm. and sees it happening and freaks out and runs in and turns off the machine and yanks her out and is like sobbing over her like, oh my God, my baby, my darling. Like, I'm so glad. Like, what happened to you? And of course, Lyra immediately turns it on and starts lying to the bitch. It's like, some guys from the party stole me. Like, I, I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I'm so glad you found me. Oh, my God. Like, she's playing the game. She's like, this so thing good. is so good at lying. <laughs> and so, um, Mrs. Coulter tries to, like, Lyra's like, how can you justify what the fuck they're doing here? Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Coulter tries to explain it about original sin and what's going on and why they think it's important. She's like, well, if it's such a big deal, why didn't you let them do it to me? Yeah. And she's like, mm. oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Such a good moment. It really is. I love when you can do that, especially to Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, Mrs. Coulter now knows she has the lithiometer, so she asks for it. And Lyra's like, oh, it's in this tin, which is the tin that has the spy fly. Mm -hmm. And so she opens the tin, and then the spy fly comes out and attacks her and knocks her out. And Lyra runs away, goes and breaks the intercision machine and their generator, and I think pulls the fire alarm, and all the kids flee. And this is when they have that screaming moment. Which? Um, Mrs. Coulter and Lyra. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. That that disturbed me. Yeah. It disturbed me because Mrs. Coulter was so scary when it happened. It reminded me a lot of what's-his-name in Sherlock Holmes when Moriarty, like, snaps and loses his shit. Like, it's mm -hmm. real dark. But then also Lyra, the desperation of the scream that was happening at the same time. It was such a good fucking... Parallel. I couldn't stop She's her mother's watching daughter. it. Yeah. But they were screaming for different things, yes. but with the same intensity and the same purpose. Like, mm -hmm. it was such a good... Ooh. And so the, the Egyptians show up with the witches <laughs> and attack and fuck things up. Fuck it up. And most of the staff is killed. The children are rescued. And then Yorick, Lee, Lyra, and Roger go up to the north... Oh, go up further north to go see Asriel. Um, or headed towards Svalbard to go see Asriel. And the Egyptians take the kids to go south. And while they're on their way there, 
They're flying in his balloon. Cliff gasps attack them, and Lyra falls out of the balloon, seemingly to her death. Mm-hmm. But it turns out she survives, which is going into the next episode. Um, we also, actually, before we go to the next episode, Will mm-hmm. reads his father's letters and finds out, like, what happened to him, kind of, and mm-hmm. how they found this window in the wall, or, or like, a, a window to an, oh, a portal, yeah. and to, to what have you. So, like, he kind of understands what the portal does. Mm-hmm. Um, so when he sees one at the end of the series, he's willing to walk through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the yeah, series one. So Lyra survives, and she's captured by the bears, and she goes and um, meets Yofer Rackneson and convinces him that she is Yorick Bernison's uh, demon. Yeah. And he wants a demon so bad. And, and then Mrs. Like, Coulter lied to him. Yes. And that's really what because, she's been working on. Exactly, because she said... They gave it to him at Bolvanger, yeah. which is where he knows they're doing this. Yeah. And so she's like, but I don't want to be his demon. I want to be your demon. You're the greatest bear there is because you're the king of the so bears. Good. And the only way that I can become your demon is if you fight him in a fair battle. Yeah. To give him a chance to do this. Because, I don't, do they explain this in the show? But Yorick was king of the bears. Yes, they explain okay, it. Okay, so he was king of the bears, but he got into a fight with somebody over a she-bear and killed him, which is not allowed in their society. And so he was banished yeah. from their their town. I don't think they explained the she bear. I think they explained an unfair fight and he was banished in he, the in the TV show. Maybe he was drugged. Did they drug him? No, I think that had to do with the It was an unfair fight that caused him to be banished okay. from and then the new king stepped in and Yofer did. Yeah, and then because Lyra Yofer, addresses it too. Exactly. And also the way Lyra convinces Yofer Rackneson that she is a real demon is really clever to me. Using um, the alethiometer? Yeah, because he said, okay, if you're really what you say you are, what is the first thing I ever killed on my first hunt? Yeah. And so she goes to the alethiometer and finds out it's his father. Mm-hmm. He killed his father because his father was a banished bear and he didn't know and he killed him over something. Yeah. And it's like his deepest secret because if they found out, he would be banished too. And so he's like, okay, I believe you. So Yorick comes in, fights Yofer. It's super fucking intense. He rips but, off his jaw. But she tells him that, like, hey, I convinced him. Oh, right, right, yeah, right, right. she right. has that moment with him. Because she's like, okay, well, he's here. Let me go talk to him so I can make him think that everything's fine. Yes. And oh, I can turn him in. I can God, set him up so for you. Oh, good. And she goes and tells him what the fuck's up. Because the thing, something that they do in the sh- book, I don't know if they do in the show. Um, it, do they show a scene of her fighting him, like, with a, a, a fake knife? Mm-mm. So in the books, y- Yorick and her are like talking because they become very close in the book. Um, I mean, they're kind of close in the show, but they be- they actually have conversations and yeah. learn about each other. And so like she has like, a, I think a sword or something. And he's like, she's like pretending to fight him. And he's just like batting it away like it's nothing. No, they didn't do that. In and so movie. he's like, it's really hard for a human to trick a bear because bears know what's up. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, like we see lies, like we can tell when you're lying or, and we can also kind of read your movements. So it's really impossible to trick a bear for a human to trick a bear. So the fact that she tricks you for is such a huge deal. I don't think that they explain, explain why it's such a big deal. I think it's more of just like the betrayal. I guess. The betrayal is a big deal. The betrayal to your Burnison. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I guess. That's, and that's what, what they, they focused talk, on. Yeah. But um, they but, just have, like, the conversation before he goes in to fight the King of the Bears. But he's shocked that she was able to trick him. But then it turns out because Yofa Rackneson was not acting like a bear, he was acting like a human. A human yeah. is able to trick him. And that's why she gets the name Lyra Silvertongue. Because mm-hmm. that is her new last name. She takes it on. She no longer is a Blackwa. Um, because oh, fuck Lyra. him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck them both. <laughs> Although I actually really like Asriel. I do too. Um, I, I, um, it's really, it was hard because first of all, I love James Black boy, mm-hmm. but like it was hard to hear that why, um, he hid Lyra. Well, like it's hard because you don't think a, a mom, like that's not a reason to keep a child from a mom. You know what I'm saying? And then she turned around and she did the same thing. Well, he, he knew what she was supposed to be and knowing that Mrs. Coulter is in the pocket of the magisterium, she would hand her over and they would kill her. Yeah. So that's another reason, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just hard. And so they have a fair fight because she tells him you can't, like, attack him on his way here. You have to make sure he gets here in one piece and has a chance. And so Yorick has literally been running for, like, 24 hours straight to get to where Lyra is. And finally gets to where she is, explains what's up, and then he be- brings the fucking heat. Let me tell you something. This is one of the best fights I've ever seen it's a in great a show fight. or a movie. It's so good. And you were on your seat the whole fucking time. 
And like, there's parts you think, oh god, he's gonna lose. Yeah. Oh god, he's gonna lose. But then he doesn't. It's and you're, so uh. good. Like I know people talk about like what is it, Gandalf and that fight. Oh, Gandalf and the Balrog. Yeah, everybody talks about that. Um, I I personally think that Dumbledore fighting um, in book five. The Dumbledore and Voldemort. That was real good too. I wanted more though. I want me too. I wanted more too. I also wanted more from Snape and um, McGonagall. Yeah, but yes. I, I knew that he was trying not to attack her. But mm-hmm. I wanted it to go on a little bit longer. But the, all the big fights I think about in history, even Avengers and all that, like this one was up there. I loved it. It was, it was so, good. so good. It's so unique. It's very different. I think that's why I liked it. This is such a unique and different show, and it's definitely a great distraction. Mm-hmm. Like it's a whole other world with bigger problems. So he wins and is now king again. And Lyra is reunited with Roger and Lee. And is it, wait, is Lee there? No, Lee is not there. It's, she's reunited with Roger. I remember in thinking York. that I had like three three episodes left at this point. No. And I had two and I was devastated. You had one. This is the second to yeah, last no, episode. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I was devastated. And so she travels with a York and, um, and Roger up to Asriel's prison, which is a laboratory. Um, because... Although the bears have him prisoner, because he is such a high-ranking person in society, yeah. they give him, like, a whole chalet and all the equipment he needs to continue his studies because he's a man of respect. Mm-hmm. And so so she gets there, and Azrael immediately is upset to see her because he sent for a child, but he didn't want it to be of all children in the world to be Lyra. And then he sees Roger, and he is, like, <coughs> immediately relieved. So he's like, okay, good, I don't have to sac- sacrifice my fucking daughter. Um, but also, he knows Lyra's destiny to a degree. It's such a fucked up situation. It really is. And you're not going to do it to your own daughter, but you'll do it to another kid. And so Lyra and Roger have, like, one last moment of being kids together. They have their little pillow fort and, like, spend the night and, like, have fun one last time. Because the next morning, she wakes up and Roger's gone. And it turns out Asriel took Roger. And um, Asriel's assistant, I forget his name. Um, oh, I don't. I definitely don't remember. Don't look to me. He, he, uh, he tells them where they went, and Lyra immediately gets with York and goes up after them because he. I think she knows what he's going to do. Yeah. And also, oh, they also have a really conversation. I'm sorry. It's also really weird to me that um, Mrs. Coulter has a whole facility that's doing what essentially Azrael is trying to do too, and well, his. That they're not doing the same thing. They're not. They're they're both cutting children. Yeah. But for different reasons. They're trying to study it to see about stopping dust. They're not trying to open a, a gateway. Yeah. Um. They have things absorbing the energy, whereas Azrael's design doesn't. So Azrael is going to use it and let the energy just explode into the atmosphere and open a door. I don't know which one is more fucked up. Um. Both are pretty bad. Yeah. I don't know which one is more. But this but, is not a lesser of two evil situation for me. I think Asriel's is lesser for me because of the intent. It's for the greater good. I guess. Um, like, I understand it's awful. I don't know what the greater good is yet, though, I think. I don't, you don't. Yeah. I don't think I know. Um, and Asriel, I think you alluded to that when you were Asriel's talking about side it. side is the good side. Okay. Um, so just be mindful of that. Try not to have opinions about it because there's so many complexities that I know I'm not going to understand everything well, until Well, it's not the end. really my opinion as much as it's framed this way in the story. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. It's like I'm trying, me, I'm trying mm-hmm. not to have an opinion because I know that I don't know the full extent of everything just yeah. yet. This no, is I mean, clearly. Opinions, and then your opinions can change. Yeah, fuck. Okay, fine. Fuck Mrs. <laughs> Coulter and fuck Azrael. Work work and so um she gets up to there like where they are just in time to see him cut roger and the door opens and mrs coulter arrives and they like make out for a second and he because they're still in love so weird to me they're in love with each other so weird um and so he's like come with me forget them come with me and we will i try to think of what he says because he hints at what he's doing Mm mm-hmm um, I don't remember exactly what he said. I think I was completely disgusted by the fact that they just cut a child and then made out. And they've been, like, trying to one-up each other all these years. Maybe I'm heartless. But I'm not attached to children like you. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, he died. Yeah. I think that that comes with being a parent. Maybe so, yeah. Because then you're like, oh, this is a person. Yeah, no, yeah. I acknowledge it's a person. But, like, it's not the... 
I think until you have kids, like not to be that's yeah. not no, person, no, like, absolutely. Oh, I have kids. I don't. I think I probably would have felt the same as you, but like mm-hmm. having kids and thinking about my daughter that I created and this happening and to, that her, happened to her. Yeah. Like I think you immediately have that sort of empathy. I think you can't help it because your your whole your life's purpose is to protect your child. No, I agree. Yeah, I get that. I get you. I don't, cut a child, I don't disagree. And then they made out, though. Like, yeah. it's one thing to cut a child, but like, hey, girl, what's up, bitch? How you doing? Shake that ass for me. But they're like, no, let's make out and then keep on keeping on. You know, like, it's the whole... And then on top of that, they were playing chess with each other all these years mm-hmm. about fucking um, Lyra. Y'all have been after each other. She literally captured you and said, but keep doing your work because you're amazing. You're doing amazing. No, amazing. she did not do that. Well, they did that. But she captured him and was trying to use him to blackmail the magistrate. I just, it's it's like, a, it's really weird. It's one of those, like, um, toxic relationships. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? No, it... It feels toxic it feels from what I know. toxic, yeah. From what I know. Yeah. I know you can't say anything. Yeah. But from what I saw, mm-hmm. this is a toxic fucked up situation you cut a child created a whole new portal right find it's all in the name of the greater good fine i will give you that but then y'all made out about it that's a weird that's well a, they haven't seen each other for a long time that's a cardi b uh offset? offset situation right there maybe yeah i don't see it that way but i get why you're he gave her a car way. and so they made out mm-hmm. and so i opened a portal let's make a mm-hmm. but no she's against the portal i hear you but it's still fucked up. No, it is a fucked up situation in that in that perspective. Absolutely, I didn't see it that way. This but I is get why it. I was so pissed. I didn't have another episode. <sighs> I remember it clearly now. Oh, this and is so, a journey. Yeah, and you get invested. Um, we kind of jumped the gun on this. What I just we realized we skipped some shit. Um, well, just fill it in now. So uh, this is how we work, guys. If no, you're there confused, is a watch really good. The there is a really good conversation between Azriel and Lyra when she confronts him about being her father. Yes, and it it, it makes me like him more, mm. just because she's like, "Well, why did you deny me?" What I was like, "Not that I deny you." Like, I never wanted to be a father. I have no like. I'm not a father person, and that's okay. Like, I respected Lyra more at the end of the conversation. I get that. Like, he was kind of cold to her about it, because this is a child you're explaining that I didn't want you. I also kind of relate, though. Like, being a very science-minded person, Mm -hmm. like, you don't have time for anything else but that. Like, you're about your field. But also, it's his destiny to do what he does. Yeah. So, like, he can't let anything get in the way of his destiny. I'm not against the coldness. Mm -hmm. I but It makes me respect Lyra, because she can turn off and on the cold when she needs to. Yes. I, I love that about her. I also forgot to mention that the Magisterium and the Bears have a big fight. With the air airships shooting yes. down on them, um, it was it was intense. I'm sorry, I'm really no worries, we're almost done. Um, and so, so they they he tries to convince her to come with him, and she refuses. And he's like, "Okay, fine, then I have to go." And so he walks to the portal. Lyra like has her moment with Roger's body; he's upset over it, and then follows him. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to Will, which is the thing. This is the thing we skipped. So go ahead. When Will um, took his mama to the neighbors, he went back to their house at night and was confronted by two men that were hired by Boreal, and he kills one of them in Mm self-defense and then runs away. (coughs) And so he runs away, and he finds a portal to another world. And he's read about it in his father's letters, so he goes through it. And then Lyra goes through the portal as well, and then it ends. Yeah. And so this is where it picks up. It's where it's going to pick up in season two, which I'm so excited for. Um, There are, like I said, this was adapted by the author as into a screenplay, which I I need that to happen with all books. Super hand in hand involved from now on. And so there's not a lot of major differences. They do introduce Will early because Will's story in the beginning of book two is happening simultaneously as Lyra's story. Mm -hmm. So it made sense from a storytelling perspective in a visual aspect to just have it happen at the same time and you see it because honestly when i first read the series for the first time i was invested in lyra and suddenly the first like four chapters of the second book is nothing but this new character that i've never met before yeah going over things that have already happened Mm -hmm. and so this made more sense from a storytelling perspective so they introduced bill will early um and then i pointed out how lyra does not find out mrs coulter and as well her parents when she does she learns it from ma costa um and then also lyra finds out about the general relation board at the party not from the lady Mm -hmm. she overhears lord boreal talking about it he's trying to hook up with the lady and he's bragging about it Mm -hmm. and that's when she learns everything and then oh billy and what's his name never break into or not billy um tony and his friend never break into mrs coulter's house 
because that never happened. Oh, I like that scene. It was a good scene, no, yeah. and he added it, so he was cool with it. Yeah, I like that. And then that. the last thing that's, like, the biggest change is Billy Costa is not the kid who dies. Oh, okay. In the, it's a different kid? It's a different kid. There's a third kid named Tony Macarius who, like, there's a random little snippets throughout the book of him. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a very simple kid. His mom doesn't really care for him. They're poor. He can She can barely feed him. She's always stressed about it, whatever. And so, like, throughout the book, there's just a little, like, couple of paragraphs about him throughout the book. And then he's the kid who gets cut, and she finds. Maybe, maybe that should and, have happened like that in this. Well, no, I think it made more sense to do it as Billy because you have emotional attachment to the to the Egyptians and to Makasta. And so for her to lose him makes all of this really have that emotional impact. Where if it's some random kid that we don't give a fuck about okay. and you find him dead, you're like, oh, or without a demon, you're like, oh, okay, that sucks. But when it's this character who's been set up since the first episode okay. to be a loving character, friend of Lyra, child that's of true. a nice character, it makes more sense. Okay. So that's the major difference. I just mean like for the coldness of it all so to help me accept it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Maybe that would help. Would have would have helped. Maybe so. Yeah. Um. But like at both anger, they there are some people who are adults who are cut. <clears throat> yeah, that was weird. That was really weird. That one um the nurse, maid lady. I don't know, the nurse maid, whatever. That mm-hmm. was a really interesting scene too. In the book, there's a lot more characters, like a lot more adults, like. But that. like the after the kids escape, the scene between that nurse maid, whatever, and Mrs. Coulter. Oh yeah. Oh man, I it's was really like, weird. you're a fucking sociopath. Yeah. It's fucked. Yeah. It's totally fucked. Yeah. But it's just so interesting. Like I love the setup. The setup sets up like this story sets up so many things to come. I cannot wait for you to like read the next or experience the next two stories because I'm going to have to start today. I the subtle knife purchase the book. The mm-hmm. subtle knife really introduces more about dust and explains what it is and you learn more about Lyra's destiny and who she is representative of and so is Will and so is Mary Malone. They're all big characters kind of reincarn not reincarnations but reimaginings of certain <clears throat> characters from the bible and so like as it goes on they have to do certain things you start to see the parallels there's major parallels but okay. things go differently because they're trying to change stuff I so, so it's excited. so good it is so good i'm really excited um i i love the themes of multiple worlds in this book and just how they explore it and how it's not like oh if you fuck something up in this world everything else changes in the other world or anything i'm really like that. excited because i've only seen the two worlds and they haven't heavily interacted yet with the with the exception of boreal Lord Boreal. Yeah. Um, no, you've seen those two. You've seen those two worlds, but there are many more worlds that are going to be and explored. I, yeah, so I'm excited um, to see that. The next the world we're going to is the world of Chitagatse, which is the city in the sky. Okay. And that world is. Don't tell me anything. Is, I'm so excited. Normally, I don't. Care, well, no, like it doesn't just, bother me. It's about consequences. So, okay. like, it's really. I'm really excited for you to see what's okay. to come with that. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, uh, it's Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to make Dana watch with me so that we can start season two together. Do it. Yeah, do I think it. so. I you think he time. would like this. I love it. Like, it's just such a unique story. It's so cool. No, it's so. really different. There's nothing to compare it to. I mean, if I had to do something, mm-hmm. I would mash up. Okay, it's going to sound weird. <laughs> but I would mash up Harry Potter. Hate it. I'm joking. BBC, Sherlock, and The Good Place. To make the show? To make the show. So far from what I know. Only because, um, not the humor of The Good Place, but, like, the intention of The Good Place. Uh-huh. Right? The sign, like, that right now feels right. BBC, Sherlock, in the terms of, like, you really have to pay attention. There's details. There's multiple things going on. And they all kind of tie together, and you have no idea how they tie together. Mm-hmm. So you feel like you miss things, but you're not really missing things. You just don't understand what they're saying. Right. And then Harry Potter... Just because, like, it is such a different, complex world. Mm -hmm. But it is more complex than Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. No, Harry Potter is actually a very soft fantasy story. Like, it's it's very... And I... And I do not normally get into hard fantasy. Yeah, no, same. I don't. It's sometimes it's, it's very hard for me to, to get my head around. So, like... That fourth wall is never there for me. Yeah. Like, I never get to the point where the fourth wall is there and I'm, like, immersed in the world. Like, it's hard for me... To understand a whole new world. In order for me to, to enjoy a world like that, I have to not be doing anything else. Yeah. Like, I can't be at work paying attention to something else. Yeah. I have to listen. Well, the first time I watched it, I don't feel like I paid enough attention, which is why I said I wanted to watch it again. Mm-hmm. While I had nothing else to do but lay still. Like, I couldn't yeah. do anything. So, I was like, this is when I have to do it. So, like, there's so many just But there's something things. else that I feel like... 
that it could be too. I haven't put my finger on it. And maybe as I watch more of it and actually start reading, I'll have more of a an understanding. But I will say I've watched nothing like this. I've uh-huh. seen no storyline like this. I've um, never loved, hated, and um, felt distant about characters before while also being emotionally invested in what their storyline is to bring. Because you do get the sense that there's a lot based on destiny. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's all about destiny. And, and only the, the most destiny. important people have like severe destinies. And mm-hmm. so you get attached to those people. Like I'm attached to Azrael and Azriel and obviously Mrs. Coulter, but at the same time, like I fucking hate them right now. Mm-hmm. And I understand they have some greater good and purpose, but I really hate both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. It's it's just it's very fascinating. Like this is the most unique story I've ever read. Yeah, there's nothing like not well, maybe there's more fantasy like this that you and I aren't aware of. Maybe but like not, I've been intrigued by the Wheel of Time. What is that? It's a very like hard, high fantasy. Oh, um, series that they're making on Amazon into a TV show. Mm. But the thing about the Wheel of Time is that there are like 3,500 named characters who have stories That's hard within the story. I can't do that. And they're all weird as fuck names. Some people have the same names. It's like reading um, a... What's the Russian author? Um, who wrote Anna Karenina? Oh, 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 fuck. Volsky? It's, it's a Russian name. It is, it's a Russian name. <laughs> Let me look it up. I'm going to I'm going to be really mad when I see it. Tolstoy. Tolstoy, fuck you. Yeah, if you read any of Tolstoy books, they all end in ski. It's really hard to keep up with them. I mean, that's your culture though. Yeah, but that, but that's not my culture, so it's difficult for me to follow. Definitely. Yeah. And so like with with the Wheel of Time, it's certain characters get perspective get st- chapters from their perspective. And then others have interludes. Oh, and that, and I was like, I could never read this series. Like, even Chris, who's a very good reader who reads high fantasy and stuff, he's like, I couldn't finish it. I like the soft fantasy. I do, too. Like, I like a... like, And I like soft magic systems more than hard magic systems. Like, hard magic systems has, like, very hard set rules and there's an action to consequence. Whereas, like, Harry Potter, it's just you swish and flick and you have the thing. I will say that part of the reason I did not watch Game of Thrones is because it felt too hard fantasy for me. Mm. And I tried reading the book. Don't read the book, guys. Don't do it. I didn't get past the first five pages. It's literally to... the first scene of Game of Thrones, and it took me five pages to get through. Yeah. No, I, I don't like his writing style, so I've never read it. It's books. too descriptive. It is too descriptive. It's just like it's like, like you Tolkien. should have been a screenwriter, sir, not yeah. a novel writer. It's too much. It's too exactly. It's way too much, and I I can't focus on that. It's um yeah, mm-mm, I can't do it. Um, but we really hope you guys like pay attention to it or watch it. Yeah. Give it a chance. Read the books. November 12th. November so 12th. It should be out, out by the time this, this yeah. episode is. It'll out. have come out yesterday by the time you're listening to yeah. this. So give it a shot. And I'll have had my new phone. Yay. Um, but now we're going to move on to our rays of light really ray quick before ray. we end this episode. Quick of the ray of light. <laughs> Sorry. So you want to go first? Uh, Yeah. I've got quite a few. Let them out. And just like gratefulness in general. The election is one, obviously. Mm-hmm. Love me. I'm so happy that he theoretically is gone. Um, I did my tube tie surgery by myself. Mm-hmm. I had to mentally check out. Yeah. I had to just be like, whatever, until the anesthesiologist came in and was like, hi, I have anxiety. I need something. Because I can't sit here for two hours. Uh-huh. And they gave me something. I think it was dilated, And I was in a oh, music video. Yeah. I was in a music video. <laughs> and I put on Big Bang Theory and just checked out until my surgery. What's really interesting is that they told me I wouldn't remember being wheeled into the OR. You remember? I remember. I remember being put to sleep. Uh-huh. And I also dreamt the entire time I was under. And I could almost remember my dreams. Wow. Mm-hmm. No, I've never... So, I've had surgery multiple times. Mm-mm. And I most of the time remember being wheeled into the OR room and looking around and seeing everything and then passing out there. But I never remember my dreams. It is, like, the most, like... It's what I imagine dying is like. Mm-hmm. Because I literally close my eyes... And I experienced nothing. I remember. I and then when I open my eyes up again, it's like hours and hours later. I know that I dreamed. I did not dream at all. I remember um, being wheeled in, switching tables. 
I remember mm-hmm. trying to fight the second round of, you know, they give you two things for anesthesia. Mm-hmm. I remember trying to fight it. And then I remember dreaming and waking up and trying to remember my dreams. <laughs> Chris always tells a story about the one time he had to get surgery on his hand. And, like, redheads aren't as susceptible to it, so they have to use extra. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, there's certain weird. weird things that redheads, like, they feel well, pain we don't more. know how anesthesia really works, so. What? We just know that it works. We don't know how it works. Holy shit. Yeah. I never knew this. Yeah. Like, we know what drugs to use to put you under so you don't feel or remember anything, but we don't know the systems that it works, like, to do that way. Why hasn't anybody studied this? Um, because we still don't under about, understand about 95% of our brain. Oh, wow. That we only understand about 5% of it. So I'm sure it has something to do with that. That's crazy. Which is why we're shifting from SSRIs to SSREs. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. They're, they've been studying it for a few years, but reuptake enhancers are more effective than inhibitors. Okay. Yeah. And so, Chris tells me the story, though, because he had to get surgery on his hand because, like, he had really bad anger issues. I mean, he still has them, I guess. But, like, back then, he really had them. He, like, punched a brick wall three times and, like, shattered his hands. And his hand. And he had to get surgery on it and, like, reconstruct and everything. But, like, she's like, okay, um, you're going to go out in, like, one, two, three. And she turns her back and starts talking to the doctor. And, like, he's still awake. And so, like, she turns around and she goes, fuck, what? <laughs> and he's like, am I supposed to be out? And then the doctor's like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. You have to give him more because he's a redhead. And then they gave him more and he passed out. And I was like, damn. I'm grateful for drugs. Mm-hmm. I'm so, so grateful for the drugs that they administered there. Uh, let's see. What else has been a ray of light for me? Um, rewatching Sex in the City has mm-hmm. been just, I love it so much. And I realize how problematic it really is. Is I it? I love it, yeah. Oh. But I love See, it. See, now I don't think I'd be able to enjoy it. It's problematic um, based on today's standards, but in the time that it was recorded and written, not so much. Because, like, it's the same reason I hate Friends. I cannot get into Friends. It's so problematic. I don't find them funny. They're so rich and entitled. You literally live in New York City and somehow have this gigantic thing... <gasps> I think, gigantic apart. Like, I just don't like them. I think that Friends is really cool because of, like, the lesbian couple and all of that. Yeah, they were progressive in that regard. And then, like, Ross dated a black girl. Yeah. Um, and it was Aisha Tyler. Yeah. Um, like, um, I know they had some progressive things, but also, like, the whole thing about Ross's dad being transgender and how they handled that was terrible. There is an episode where they break it down, though. No, they didn't. I've seen that episode. They did not break it. It's the whole episode where he has to deal with it and comes to terms with it, but they explain it completely wrong. And they made it seem like all drag queens want to be women. And they didn't explain truly what being trans was or a transsexual. Yeah, they blurred the lines between transgender and drag. And drag. And it wasn't a good thing because it really misinformed a lot of people. Speaking of this, I was sending my mom memes um, that Luis was posting on Facebook because they were great Mm -hmm. yesterday. And then she was like, who is that? And I was like, oh, that's my friend that does, like, the drag show at the cantina. And she was like, oh, does he do drag? I sent her a picture of him, like, as a male and then him as his drag alter ego. And she was like, oh, my God, why is he so pretty in both? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's gorgeous. You know, he's quitting that. I saw it. Made, I commented. I was like, it makes me sad, but he's got to do what he needs to do. I know that he was burnt out. That's not the only reason. Oh, well. I'll explain after the show. That's fine. Um... um trying to think of what else the surgery was a really big deal for me just because mm-hmm. i didn't never thought i'd be able to do it without daniel had to do it with drugs but I still did it by myself um i don't know i went to dinner last night where'd you go we went to mabella's for millie and kimmy's birthday oh was it good yeah it was, it's always good i've never been it's really good it's an italian steak it's like a true italian steakhouse and yes you pay more money but you get more you get food oh, okay you get, food like my dinner last night my steak was like that big shit i couldn't finish it she just gestured a large size. The size of my dick it's like four inches i'm no, joking my dick is way bigger <laughs> than that. make me pull them out <laughs> i have multiple work um i don't know i'm just really grateful and happy about the election mostly yeah, yeah. i'm glad mm-hmm so for me, my rays of light is my friends again. But this week has been such... Well, honestly, the last two weeks have been wild. I've been very busy. Um, my best friend Christopher got married last weekend. Was it last weekend? Yeah, it was last weekend. Oh, fuck. It's it was been last, a week. I can't believe it's only been a week. Last Saturday. This, like, this, 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 week, this last two weeks have gone on so long. So like the week leading up to that, I had to do a lot of preparation for it and make plans and buy stuff and get ready for it. 
And then, like, the weekend of, like, that Friday, we carpooled up together, got things ready for the wedding, partied with our, like, close friends. I like, do have a different ray of light, but I'll oh. say it after. Please oh, okay. Yeah. Um, excuse me. And I got to meet, like, a lot of his extended family. But then I also, like, had, like, a moment of sadness, kind of. Like, I broke down to one of our friends, Jewel, who is the one who, like, responded so positively about the boundary. Mm-hmm. The one that you said you wanted to meet. Mm-hmm. But, like, I was getting, like, drunk and in my feelings um, just because all my friends are moving and eventually, and it was just really getting to me. And I kind of just, like, talked to her about it. And Well, I actually was in the room by myself, and then she came in to, like, get a breather from everything, too. And that's when we started talking. And I kind of broke down to her and told her my feelings about things. She's like, we just need to talk to everybody because I don't, I think you're you're underestimating under yeah underestimating your value in our lives because we really do care about you and love you and want you to be a part of our lives um and then i just talked to her about other things i told her just about stuff i talked about in therapy and why like it's been so like damaging to me or whatever um she has a gay little brother and so like she's like well no like thank you for sharing this with me because like i don't really know what to expect with what he's experienced or what he might deal with in the future so i'm taking notes and kind of thinking about things that he might be dealing with too um it was just a really good moment. I'm so grateful for her to listen to me about that and encourage me to talk to my friends, specifically Christopher, about everything. Um, and then my our friend Olive. So they got married and it was beautiful. It was amazing. I, I love met all the his snaps family. That you sent. Oh Aww. yeah, I only ha- I only took like a couple pictures. Did I send the picture of them under the tree? Yes, I loved that one. I, I it was so romantic. Ended up editing it a little bit to make it look better, and it just it's so beautiful. Um, it's just such a good picture. I love it. Um, and so. So, like, I got to meet all his family, and apparently his family's heard about me, and they're excited to meet me, and Aww. same with her side of the family. Like, his aunt's like, if you ever want to come down to Florida, just ask for my address from Chris, and you can come visit me, and blah, Aww. blah, blah. And apparently she's, like, the hard-ass aunt, so I'm impressed her very well, I guess. Yeah. So it was cool. Um, and, I don't know, just everybody was really welcoming and kind and nice. Yeah, she had such a good experience. I was a little bit, like, freaked out at first, because there's a bunch of strangers, and I don't know how to act. <laughs> But after I got a little bit more drunk, it got fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, introverts tend to have to drink a little bit at parties to yeah, relax. to really enjoy myself. I have taken three shots in a car before, before walking into a party. <laughs> well, and then also crying because I was carrying all that with me and letting that out and, yeah. like, expressing my feelings and getting a better perspective. What? There's one group of friends that we like, like, four people out of, but they, they do, like, a Friendsgiving every year. And uh-huh. I, I have to drink before I go. Oh. I have nothing in common with these people, and I get, like, in my own head. Why do you go? Uh, Daniel. Daniel's really, really close friends with one of the people out there. Oh, and it's, like, you. their kind of family and extended friend group. But I have to... It's hard to relate Patron, to people. Yeah. Patron in the car. Or, like, I'm so obnoxious, sometimes I put my foot in my mouth. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do that. I don't like isolating people. And then everything with this week has been stressful because of the election. So, like, election night, I've been able to think I went and hung out with my friends, Maggie and Katie. We watched the election results, and I tried lemongrass for the first time because we got it for Uber Eats, and it was Did so good. It? It's, it's the so best pad thai I've had in town. It's so good. And I also got the mango sticky rice dessert, yes. which is so good. Yeah. I love lemongrass. I order from them a lot. I've never had it before, and it's probably my new favorite type Their of Their sushi so. is good, too. That's what I've heard. She got sashimi, and I was like, you're getting sashimi in Columbus? And she's like, it's good. It's really good. I was like, okay, girl, work. But, um, my friend Lavelle lives down the street from her, and she brings her food all the time. So, like, I've kind of been avoiding being at home. Because of the election, because of my father and everything. Yeah, not really. I mean, I don't need to, other than, like, my dad and I do not see eye to eye when it comes to politics. And so it's a very strenuous thing whenever major elections happen because we're so polar opposite. And so, like, I've been avoiding my house. So then, like, the second night, what was it? That was Tuesday. Then Wednesday night, I was at, I think, Chris's house. And you then Thursday been at home night, a lot this week. Every time I text you, you're with somebody. Thursday and Friday night, I was at Olive's because our friend Olive moved, and that was really emotional. But like, I wrote her a really long letter about like what? I still have gas from where they. Oh, oh! Air I thought stuff. you were being emotional. No, I like, like I, I burp and fart all the freaking time because they pump your stomach full of air. That's fine. Me. No, it's we, not. We accept it. No. I do not accept it. I'm ready for it to be done. Burp in the microphone so we all know. That'll be that. No. I will not ever. <laughs> Anyway, so, like, I was, haven't been home all week. I've been at different friends' houses just trying to avoid... And here he is today. Oh, yeah. No, literally, I've been gone Tuesday through Sunday for a huge chunk of the day away from my family. Um, 
because I just don't want to have to deal with it. But also, I'm kind of afraid of, like, having, like, a, a blowout a fight with my argument. father. I think it's coming. Oh, God, I hope not. I think it's coming, and you're just going to have to do it and continue to stand up for yourself. No, I think I'm just going to, until I leave, yeah. I'm just going to keep the peace for my mom's sake. I get that. Um. Oh, also, did I talk about my mom? No, that oh, happened. Fuck. That's the other reason why these weeks have been dragging for you. That so, happened, like, the week before I had the, surgery. The Sunday before Christopher's wedding and your surgery. Mm-hmm. No, no, it was, it was two Sundays before your surgery. So the mm-hmm. Sunday before Christopher's wedding, my mom fell and hyperextended her leg and broke it in, like, three places around her knee. So she has to get a knee replacement. Um, but I had to take her to the hospital, and I missed three days of work because of it. Um, Because I had to, like, look after her. and His dad wasn't home all of it. My father was out of town. Yeah. So, like, he ended up coming home early. um, And they said I'm taking taking care of her ever since. But, um... That's a lot. It's been so much stress for that. And then I had everything with the wedding coming up all at once. And then the election all at once. So I just really... I feel like I haven't had a chance to relax. The dynamic when an adult is down for the count in a household changes significantly. Especially when this person is the primary cook and, like, cleaner of the house. I was stressed out with Daniel down, and he's not even the primary cook or cleaner. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot. It's It's a lot to deal with. It's so much. And so... And so I've been gone all week, this week, pretty much just being with friends. But my friend Olive left. She's moving to Kansas um, to be with her fiancé, who's coming back from Korea tomorrow. And, like, I wrote her a letter just saying how much I love her and how, like, I fully intend on keeping her in my life for as long as possible just because she's one of the people I look up to and aspire to be she's like. Really sweet. And she's always shown me, like, just unquestionable love and support and and, like, always make sure... She's that person who will always, like, if we're in a group setting, be like, hey, how are you? Are you holding up good? Like, do we need to do anything? Like, what's going on? She's that friend. And so, like, I wrote her a letter and explained it to her, just told her that. And I gave that to her on Thursday because I thought that's when I was saying bye to her. So I said bye to her and I cried and then I left and I drove home and I cried while I was driving home. And then Friday... Uh, not Friday. I'm sorry. That was Wednesday. I'm sorry. That was Wednesday when I said bye to her. And then Thursday um, was... Like, I guess Chris and Amelia were hanging out with her. But then I guess a bunch of other people did. It's like, hey, you should come too. Just coming out again. And, like, I had, like, a little panic attack about it, which is silly. But, like, I got through it, which I'm proud of. <laughs> because, like, uh, Amelia's like, oh, yeah, she comes. Like, is it okay with Olive? And she's like, well, Olive's really busy. And I don't feel like I should have to ask her for that. Like, she doesn't care. It's fine. You should come. And I have you a have big issue about imposing you on people. With, that, oh, I do. No, it is. It's something I need to talk to Stephanie about. Um... But like, like with your friends, you need to get like yeah, really work on it. That's it. And I think with future changes, it won't be as big of an issue because yeah. we're literally living together potentially. And um, fully supportive. I thought we weren't discussing it. Though. I guess not. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It's kind of hard not to. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was Wednesday, and I said bye to her, and I was sad. And then Thursday, I was kind of a mess, and it got me thinking a lot about what it means to be losing like my core group of friends because they become like my family. And I lean on them a lot, and, like, we're there for each other, and we're always together doing stuff. Always. And it's <laughs> kind of opened my eyes that, you know what, like, I have no major reasons to stay here. Nope. Um, I mean, I have my friends. I have Jessica. I have all my family. But my family's but that's, too. But that's not anything that would go away because you moved. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I mean, I have a job here that I've been at for a long time. Great. But it's not what I want my career to be. Nope. I don't know what I want for my career right now, but... And you have time to figure it out. I do. I do. And so, like, I, I, I was kind of a mess. And it's, it goes back to what I talked to Jewel about. Because, like, I've never had a friend like Christopher before. And just not being around him anymore. He's a unique person. Yeah, and not being around him anymore just really freaks me out. Not that, like, I'm trying to be, like, dependent or I'm, like, latching onto them, but, like, he really... You value your friendship. I do. And I, I'm just trying to make sure I tell myself that I'm not, like, latching on or something. Or... But, okay, so here we go again. This is now the therapy session that we had <laughs> over Skype. <laughs> Aside from... No, 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 we can't, you can't do that. Mario was afraid to even, like, bring it up, and I was like, why? These people, like, love you. They're so... But Chris has also asked me about it before. Uh, yeah, like, I don't, I don't don't second-guess yourself. We talked about imposter syndrome, and, yeah. like, I, I struggle with that, too. I fully relate. But, like, you know, there's a point where you have to go, no, this is the hard evidence surrounding why I should not feel this way, and I can't keep feeling this way. I just think... And that takes practice. Everything that happened with... Yeah. 
and how much trust I put in him and how much I thought I mattered to him. And it ended up not being that it's way no. has really, I guess just made me question my judgment and but self, it's you know, not, it's not I know the that. same. And I it's know. not the same on so many levels. It's not the same. I know. I just have to learn to accept that. Yeah. But anyway, I pretty I'm, much I'm for it. I was really for upset. It. And I was like, look, I can't imagine this. And like, the more I think about it, the more I like cried. I was like crying at work about it. Yeah. And so like, I was like, were you serious about me moving with you? Cause I really want to move with you. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And, I, and then I expressed like my concerns, like, is it just you asking or is it the whole group wanting this? Cause I don't want to impose on them. Cause like, I don't know their plans or what they're expecting or if they want me around or whatever, you know, cause I know he wants me around, but what about the, and Amelia too? But he's like, no, everybody loves you and wants you. Like everybody's cool with it. Um, I just, I think you, I mean, I, I understand wanting to move with your group of friends. I mm-hmm. like, I get that feeling, but also I, I want you to use this as a way to get out of here. Yeah. That's what I want from it. I see. That's, I think I want you to, I want you to be like, no, I don't have to look at these people that don't have to be here. They're not here. Go mm-hmm. as fast as you can go and don't yeah. doubt yourself. And you keep talking about wanting to find like that inner, that inner like just what is it that you called it that drive that drive again do it do it now do it for yourself and for nobody and that's else. why i'm allowing myself to have it because it's something that i want yeah. so bad to get out of this place and go find something else and find something else for me and i think i've let fear control me but knowing i have a core group of people with me absolutely no matter where i go with them mm-hmm I will feel more secure in doing it because I know I can't potentially financially fall back on them by any means, but like I have emotional support if I need it. And so I don't know. It's just a big choice for me and I want to do it. I don't know when we're leaving or where we're going yet. It doesn't matter. Which is kind of the scary part, but also the exciting part. It's really fun. Um, I wish Daniel and I had moved before we had kids. I'm starting to plan like finances and... Things like that. And with Biden winning the election, that's hopefully going to open my options to certain things regarding student loans um, and and just my financial future. So I'm kind of really excited about this and scared, but I'm really grateful that I got to this point. And Mm -hmm. that's my biggest ray of light. And then also just having my friends there to (laughs) keep me away from the house during all this election Mm -hmm. because of just the negativity at my house because of it. So I'm just super excited for the future and figuring out what I'm going to have for my life, you know? And isn't this supposed to be your retrograde? Like, yeah, what is it that you were my, explaining to my, me? My uh, Saturn returns. Your Saturn return. And your Saturn returns is, and a lot of people, I guess, do this when they're my, around my age, is they forge a new path in life, either by moving or changing careers. I'm excited Or for making you. large life choices, and I'm doing all of that. I'm so, so happy for I'm you. glad I figured it out, kind of. I still need to see Stephanie again because I've still only seen her once because it's been hard to schedule and she hasn't replied to my emails. But oh God, she's so busy. That's what she says. She's like, I'm super unorganized. So like, she be is. ready. I did. Oh, I did Corona that tele sessions and she didn't send me a bill till like last week. I still haven't been billed. Yeah, you will eventually. Just pay it when you get it. Oh, like is it all going to add up? So like, oh, here's like four sessions. Here's a hundred dollars. Yeah, like that. Okay. But it's not bad. I think uh, all the sessions I did was maybe a hundred and forty dollars because yeah. she has to charge differently for. Her. Oh, well, you're not doing telehealth. Yeah, no, I, um... Just I'm put $25 aside every time you go. Yeah, I'll have to do that just yeah. to make sure I'm covered. Yeah. I mean, I doubt I... It's not like I'm not going to have the money, but... No, but... I'd much rather not. pay as I go than... Me too. Because I stupidly sent her... I Like, I emailed her because I got, like, a notification from Anthem that, hey, your bill's ready or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I looked and it said I still owed her $25, so I emailed her. Or I replied to the email that I sent her saying, hey, I noticed this. And, like, I never got a reply. And I looked at it and realized I replied to myself and not to her. <laughs> Even if you replied to her, I don't know that she'd answer. Um, she but, yeah. I'm sorry. You thought of another ray of light? I did. So, um, my best friend is getting married next year. And um, I've been telling her this whole time, the only thing I regret about my courthouse wedding is not having pictures. Mm-hmm. So, I think, and Kim really helped me last night. Like, was like, this is not stupid. Do it. Do it. Do it. I think I'm going to get a wedding dress, a tux, and I think I'm going to, like, recreate pictures from my wedding. That's cute. To have for my 10-year anniversary next year. I would love that. And I That's told, adorable. I told Daniel, I said, if we do that, if I actually buy, like, a wedding dress, like, the one that I've always wanted, uh-huh. I said, we might as well just renew our vows in your parents' backyard. Why don't you? 
I think we are. I, we talked about it this morning. That'd and he cute. was like, I don't care. But he said, if that's what you want to do, then I'll do it. Like, it's fine. When's your anniversary? June 24th. Work. Do it. So I think I'm going to actually, I'm really nervous. I'm going to email my favorite local photographer who is a small black business owner. Uh huh. And I'm going to see if she can schedule me for May of next year. She books it really quickly because she's also a birth photographer. Oh, okay. So I'm going to message her and see if this is something she would even remotely want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if she says, yes, I think we're going to go ahead with a vow renewal. And then I talked to Sheena about it last night after talking to Kim. And I was like, your wedding is so much more important because you're not married and I am. I was like, I don't want to do this if you can't be here. Because she was at my first wedding. And she was like, no, I'm coming. And I said, okay, well, then you need to give me a date so that we don't overlap. Like, I want to have my time for you and time for this. And so, she knew we would come. That's amazing. I'm really happy about it. I'm really, I'm like shy, shyly happy about it. Because I was like, we can't have more than 30 people. Because I still won't walk down an aisle and tell you that I love you in front of that many people. Yeah. Because we only did that in front of 20 people at the courthouse. Oh, okay. And then we had a party for the other 175 that showed up. Jesus fuck. They tell you, they tell you 50% of people will come. Every single person we invited came. Oh. And if they couldn't come, they sent someone in their place. Like Daniel Saber, professor couldn't come, so he sent his wife. Oh, wow. It was like we had a packed backyard. That's wild. It was crazy. This backyard? Yeah, it was in oh, this. Oh, wow. So we, we threw a party here, so I was like, I feel like we should renew at their new house now. And Millie's dying to do something. So I'm actually going to talk to her about it today and see if she's serious. That'd be cool. I'm a little bit, like, shy about it, though. Like, a little Why? bit, like, embarrassed and nervous. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Like, it's a very common thing, people renewing their vows, and it's just a testament to your love that he's willing to do it. So. Yeah. And I told him this morning, I said, like, we've been together almost 14 years. That's a chunk of our lives. Yeah. And I said, I it's think a third about, of it, right? And more than a, less than a third. For me, it's more than a third. For him, it's a little less than a third, because he's three years older. Um, but I was like, I think about my friends now that got married... And, like, they're not together anymore. Mm -hmm. They got married for the wrong reasons. And it's like, I'm really proud of our relationship. Our relationship is unique and different. And I want to celebrate it. And we don't really celebrate our anniversary. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't really, we've never really done anything. We're not celebrators. Well, I'm glad you're doing this for yourself. We'll see. Maybe you are a romantic after all. Daniel is the only person who can make me feel romantic, but even then it still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, whatever. I'm not a super romantic person. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sex. I hope that's in your vows. My parents will be there, so probably not. Yeah. Well, you can My just... mom asked me why I had wigs this week. Wigs? I have wigs. Why'd she ask you? How did she know you have wigs? Oh, we were talking about something. I was like, you can try on my wig and see how you feel. And um, she was like, why do you have wigs? And I was like, I, ha I just have them. And she was like, why? And I was like, stop asking questions you don't <laughs> want to know the answer to. <gasps> she was like, what? I was like, yes. <laughs> Sex. Stay out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> just know. <laughs> Daniel likes... The idea. Me, I like it. That's all me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna go buy a wig tonight. He's like, yes, Let's do it. <laughs> That's all me. I like feeling like a different person. Mm -hmm. There's something stress relieving about it. I guess, yeah. There's like a sense of anonymity. Yeah. Do you ever make up back backstories? Like, oh, I'm Jennifer today. You have and... to cut this out. Oh, okay. You have to cut this out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Should we wait until it's over just so there's no chance to record it? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm not talk about it anymore because I'm going to tell you something I've never told anybody. So with that being said, uh, we thank you guys so much for listening this week. Sorry we ended abruptly, but I got to find something out. <laughs> <laughs> you have something to tell me too, why he's quitting. Luis, Luis. Oh, oh, quitting. oh, shit. Okay. Um, so, um. We'll talk to you guys next time. Like, rate, like, rate, and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, um, <coughs> Tune In, Google Podcasts, all that shit. We're on everything now, and YouTube. Also, you can email us at the I Am Very Passionate Podcast Gmail. We're still here, waiting for someone to email us. The email is I Am Very Passionate Podcast at Gmail dot com. That's it. Um, <laughs> there's no the, and uh, you don't know that. <laughs> I do. I, I have access. Yeah, he does. I'm just, I'm just kidding. It's a really um, bad your mama style joke. Is it? Like your mom. <gasps>
How dare you? Okay, let's end this. I want to gossip. <laughs> okay, I'm Mario. I'm Jessica. So we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Yay.